As a scrawny six foot kid living in Tennessee who grew up playing baseball in China, my parents brought our family over to the States in order for me to pursue a better education. And although academics are extremely important, in my freshman year, I developed a love for football. I tried out and made the high school team, spending my first three years playing as a backup QB, never getting a single snap in a game. My Asian parents were getting frustrated. All of their friends' and sons were 4.0s and they wanted me to pick up the violin rather than the football. However, as our starting QB graduated, it was my time to step in. It's my senior year and I was ready to start my first ever game in high school with hopes of being able to get a scholarship from big schools to save my family money. Our high school debut was against McKenzie High as on third and 15 I try a deep bomb to my teammate but clearly the arm strength isn't there as the ball is terribly underthrown. But on second goal I hit my teammate for the touchdown on the angle route for my first career high school touchdown. That definitely settled the nerves for my first ever football game and I started to use my mobility to make plays. Generating extra time for my receivers to get open downfield as we catch this DB sleeping for another touchdown. Second and seven here, I shake off the sack, start rolling out to my right, looking to make another highlight play down the field, but the ball is once again underthrown and the DB comes up with the interception. But we end the game with a win against McKenzie, our first career high school win. I threw for four touchdowns and ran for one. I definitely need to control my turnovers, but I'm a QB who loves to give my receivers chances down the field. And just after the first game, we already started garnering some interest from schools here. As South Alabama, Old Dominion, and Georgia State have shown interest in me. This definitely gave me a lot of confidence as coach calls an option run. I pitch out to my boy Howell who takes it to the the house. He reminds me of CMC the way he's doing it all. First and 10, I'm going through my progressions and I hit my number one receiver Nguyen, who's Vietnamese. He ran a nasty slant route there. Tian Nguyen is the name, ladies and gentlemen, as on second and inches, I take a deep shot to Nguyen for the 55 yard touchdown from pre-cal to the football field. The Asian chemistry is real. We blow our first two opponents on the schedule as we face our toughest opponent yet. La Verne High School, they're undefeated. On first and 10, I throw a nice lob for my teammate adding a little touch on the throw, and I close out the drive with an absolute bullet to my tight end at the corner of the end zone. However, on the next drive, I throw a terrible interception. I didn't see the linebacker underneath, which ended up costing my team as Laverne scores a touchdown on the very next play. We're down seven, and as my confidence in my arm is a little low right now, I decide to take off and use my legs and my speed for a big 33-yard gain. First and 10, I drop back, stand tall in the pocket, take a huge hit from that fat ass, but I rope it on the money to my boy Nguyen, who who's definitely becoming my favorite target. Tied up at 14, two minute drill. I take off again for a huge run. I refuse to go out of bounds. That's just not in my name. Fast forward to the fourth, we're up by seven and I take a terrible safety there. That's just lack of game awareness. I need to just get the ball out fast there and take the short yardage. But our defense comes up big and gives us the ball back. I tried to take off here, but my fat fullback who definitely gambled on this game acts like a linebacker and actually causes me to fumble the ball. I have no idea what he is doing. I just start spazzing out, but we end the game with another win, three wins in a row, and it is my first game rushing for over 100 yards. Four schools like James Madison and Western Kentucky started showing me interest, which led me to think that playing as a dual threat QB and using my legs more could benefit me more as my arm just isn't there yet. Game four in Paris. We're in Paris. Four games in, I already feel my arm is developing with just experience as we throw the best throw of our season on this deep ball for TN. Fried rice to fa, 63 yard top. We throw for 539 yards and four touchdowns, which moves us up to a two star QB. I get offered my first four scholarships from football, which is just insane to me as I've only played four high school games. Memphis, South Alabama, Georgia State, and Western Kentucky all sent me an offer. So I ran home to my mom to show her what football could do for the family, and she ripped up all four because it wasn't Harvard or Stanford. But still, I was incredibly excited to hear from coaches as more schools are starting to take notice of me. Before game five against Athens, there were some rumors that power five scouts were gonna be at the game as Athens is 4-0 and they have some players looking to go D1. So I knew I had to ball to my pants full. Third and 10, I take a deep shot to who else? Newman, who comes up with a ridiculous catch over that poor DB. Then I wrap the drive up with a touchdown to my boy Howell. Athens wasn't planning to go nowhere though as they score 13 unanswered points to take the lead. This was my first time playing from behind and of course it's the game that scouts were watching. It's my first time ever running a two minute drill. I've only done this in practice so I was really nervous. Third and eight, coach calls a screen from my boy Howell. I dump it off and he only managed to get six yards. So the game all comes down to this one play with the scouts in attendance. Well, I crumble under the pressure. 
And the answer is no, as I tuck the ball in and I take it all the way for the game winning touchdown. And we take down undefeated Athens to remain perfect at 5-0. and And sure enough, after the game, we receive interest from Louisville. I'm a big fan of Louisville as I grew up idolizing Lamar Jackson and I try to model my game after his. I really wanted the Louisville offer, so I started running like an absolute maniac. I'm talking buff food style. Truck with no brakes going downhill. Chinese Derrick Henry. And I came out with a career game. 387 yards passing, 20 carries for 145 rushing yards, and 6 touchdowns. And sure enough, Louisville offered me a scholarship. But that wasn't all. Tennessee, the best football school in my state, offered me a scholarship as well. This was mind-blowing to me as the Vols were the team that I supported ever since my family moved here. Everyone at my school is a Vols fan. I also started getting interest from SEC schools like South Carolina, Mizzou, and Kentucky. Playing football at the next level seem more and more plausible as we move on against Harrison High. I drop back on second and goal and I lob a sweet dime to the back corner of the end zone to my tight end. That's a college level throw right there. Scouts are frothing at their mouths over throws like that. I continue to show the pocket awareness, stepping up, standing up tall, trusting in my tackles as I hit Nguyen for a big gain over the middle. Late in the third, I show off the burners, made the linemen eat grass, and took it all the way for a house call. We dominate with 354 passing yards and 5 total touchdowns and we have moved up to a four-star prospect. And would you look at that? The Stanford Cardinals have offered me a scholarship. My mom is filled with joy. She doesn't have to pay tuition while she can brag about her son being at Stanford now. She finally made me dinner for the first time in three months because my grades were down. In South Carolina, the game Cox also offered me a scholarship, which is the first SEC school other than Tennessee to offer. And speaking of the SEC, three SEC schools are starting to show interest, including Nick Saban and the Alabama Crimson Tide. When I heard Nick Saban was going to be at my high school game, I knew I had to put on a show. But I came out extremely jittery and nervous, and I throw a terrible interception. After the pick, though, I turned on my game and started firing with a ball layered over the linebackers right in my teammates' hands for the touchdown. Next trip, my receiver runs a nasty route, and I hit him for a beautiful Tony Toe Tap touchdown in the end zone. Bristol shows a bust in coverage as I hit the wide open receiver for my third touchdown of the game, and I round it off to my boy TN for four passing touchdowns on the day. And after the game, Mr. Saban and the Crimson Tide officially offered me a scholarship. You heard that right. Nick Saban wants a Chinese QB to lead his program. This is a barrier-breaking moment in human history, ladies and gentlemen. But that wasn't all. OU, Ohio State, and Notre Dame were starting to show interest as well. My mom tells me instantly to pick up Notre Dame as they are an academic school and my cousin Tyler Buckner is the current starting QB for them. But we can't have a QB battle against family. And we also need more starting Asian QBs in college football. So I decided to respond to Ohio State who have produced so many dual threat QBs in the past. Now that I've received an offer from Bama and Tennessee, the girls at school were finally paying attention to your boy and started coming out to the game. First and 10 in the red zone, I overthrow a wide open touchdown with Ohio State scouts in the stands and even the girls too man i still have some inconsistencies in my game as then i'm able to do something like this where i absolutely drop it in my teammates bucket and then the very next play i'll fumble the ball away like i just have too many mental errors first and 10 i throw a hitch route to my boy union expecting just a first down but he breaks a tackle and takes it all the way i'd be surprised if the scouts aren't looking at him he's been playing like a five-star receiver on third and three i'm scrambling to my left buying time for my receivers and i complete an insane throw rolling to my left, throwing back to my right. By far the craziest pass I've ever thrown in my life. And after the game, Ryan Day comes down from the stands and verbally offers me a full ride right then and there on the spot. I also became a five-star QB and I'm ranked 96th in the country. This was a really emotional moment for me personally, as I've always wondered whether or not I could do something I love rather than what my parents wanted. We also started receiving interest from more schools as we enter my final regular season game as a high school football player. Friday night lights, senior night. All of my homeboys came to watch me ball. But on the very first play of the game, I get rocked for a fumble, which Franklin turns into six. I'm not gonna lie, I was pissed off after this turnover and decided to take it out on Franklin's defense. Scoring not one, not two, not three, not four, not five but six touchdowns on their defense, concluding my senior season with 413 passing yards and 76 rushing yards. We've completed some of our goals early, becoming a five-star QB, ranked 67th in the country, getting offered from both my dream schools, my mom's dream schools, and power five schools. But can we end our senior season with a state championship? And which college will I ultimately commit to for the next stage of my career?
High school playoffs in Tennessee. Am I ready to lead my team to a state championship and get more offers from Power 5 schools? Let's find out. We played Dyersburg in the first round. 11-0 undefeated team. First play here. I shed a sack. I drive. I have the touchdown and I get pummeled by... Is that a linebacker? DB? I don't know. Bro is just kind of squatting there the whole play. Very next play though. I come back and I boom the DB there. Oh my god. That's a crime ladies and gentlemen. Still a two score game in the second. I read man coverage pre-snap. So I'm looking for my favorite target. The Vietnamese valedictorian. The Vietnamese vacuum. He knew it. All he had to do was beat that safety there and I had the utmost confidence that he would get the job done. We defeat Dyersburg in round one pretty comfortably and we keep our perfect season alive. I was really surprised at how slow Dyersburg defense was to be honest but then I saw their head coach and I was like oh anyways we get another scholarship offered to us from the Hokies which was Michael Vick's college and we also started getting noticed out in the west in the Pac-12 Washington State Washington and Oregon all showing interest and we have broken a new record ladies and gentlemen we are now ranked 26 in the country which makes me the highest ranked Chinese player in high school history as Buckner's highest rank was 28 I have the attention of the nation they've never seen a Chinese QB rise up the ranks like this I got people back home learning the rules of football and everything. The buzz is insane. Round two against 10 and 1 Maryville. I don't know why they built a stadium in the middle of a forest, but regardless, they show a cover one man, which means I gotta hit Tian, who body bags the DB for a touchdown. He's becoming one of the best receivers in the nation, man. The Asian stock is going up right now, ladies and gentlemen. If you're non Asian, find yourself an Asian wife. By the time your kid is NFL ready, we probably gonna take over the entire NFL. Our defense on the next drive gets us back to back sack on second and third down to force Maryville to kick a field goal. First and ten, I roll out to my right. All I see is green grass ahead of me, and I just eat it there at the end. I'm definitely gonna get toasted for that in Monday's film session. That was embarrassing. But a dominant defensive performance mixed with our explosive offense led us to a 55-3 win over Maryville. We had seven total touchdowns, and Dan Lanning from Oregon has seen enough. Third round of the playoffs, one game away from playing at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville for the state championship. Collegedale kicks the game up with a field goal and then I take a terrible sack to start but on third and 20 I rope a back shoulder to my guy my brother from a different mother Nguyen who makes an incredible toe tap grab and we end the drive with a strike up the seam to put up seven on the scoreboard third quarter I see miscommunication between DB so I throw the deep post and Nguyen makes a sweet one-handed catch right there now I'm rolling to my left looking for the highlight play to seal myself for scholarships I throw it up to Nguyen and he drops it I just start standing there staring at him. I, I couldn't believe it. But it didn't matter in the end because we send College Dale home. I am on fire right now as I have back-to-back -back seven touchdown games. And we have made it to the state championship. One of my goals before I started my season was definitely to win state for all of my teammates and most importantly my family. You already know how important finishing first and winning trophies is in Asian family. It's really the only way that I could win over my mom to pursue a football career. So we are at Neyland Stadium. Knoxville. Mom is in the stands to watch her son play for the very first time. Perfect season on the line. State championship against Franklin High. who have quarterback Jamal Knox, the third ranked player in the country and is the number one player out of Tennessee. But to be the best, you gotta beat the best. And that's exactly what I wanted to do in my final high school game of my career. Not gonna lie, my palms were Wet. I felt like I was gonna throw up in the tunnel with how nervous I was for this game and the nerves translated onto the field as we start off the game looking for a shot play down the field and the ball is underthrown for an interception the very first play of the game is an interception Jamal Knox comes back to hit a 40 yard touchdown just the absolute worst start we could have asked for third and 13 on the next drive I have the seam open but the ball sails on me and I almost turn it into another pick we are forced to punt and Frank when marches down the field to make it 10-0. I've never been down two possessions in a game in my entire life. My mom is shaking her head in the stands right now, preparing the slipper as we speak. First and 10, coach calls Carl Flats to get me on the board with my arm, but I hesitate for half a second. The ball comes out late, and it's another pick. Knox then comes down on the other end and cashes in to make it 17-0 for Franklin. Knox is clearly outplaying me right now and isn't even close. He's got two touchdowns, and my longest pass is four yards. Coach Newby the arm wasn't working so he calls a triple option and I keep it to break out for our first first down of the game. Next play another option run. I pitch it to my running back but Franklin's defense is 
all over that. They are swarming sideline to sideline right now as all the momentum is on their side. Second and 10, I roll out to my right and I finally hit Tien for our first big completion of the game. 20 yard reception. Next play, I come back to Tien again as he finds the hole in the zone as the arm starts to heat up. First play in the red zone. I see a lane ahead. I see some open grass. I take it all the way to get Clarksville on the board. First play in the second quarter. Knox has been on fire, but he throws an interception to concept pick kick. Con and he gives me a nice return as well. Could this be a momentum swing? Very next play, coach calls another triple option. I keep it again, and I see receivers blocking downfield. It's on him, Hef. Do your dance. Let me see something. Hey. Hey, hey, yay, hey, yay. Hey. Okay, that was ass. But what a response after a brutal first quarter. Momentum is clearly on our side as Knox eats a sack and defense forces a punt. First and 10, I keep it as my legs are doing the damage. I hit a spin move truck. That is the most disrespectful play of all time right there. A spin into a truck is Crazy. Coach finally calls a pass play, and I find my running back up the middle for a huge game. We then cap the drive off with a QB keeper into the end zone to take our first lead of the game. However, Knox says not so fast as he hits a deep shot to his receiver. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm starting to think we could be in for a shootout with the way Knox has been playing. Franklin on second and goal. Knox pitches it out to his running back as he tries to get the edge. But we have guys outside. We make initial contact. But what? No idea how he got in there, but Franklin snatched the lead back. First and 10, coach calls another option. I fake the pitch to my running back and I'm off. I cut inside with a move, breaks a tackle, keeps my balance and stayed on my feet. Now it's a race to the end zone. 63 yard touchdown, the run of my life right there, ladies and gentlemen. Clarksville has regained the lead, but now we got Jamal Knox running the two minute drill to close out the half as his receiver makes a ridiculous one handed catch. What is going on right now? Franklin is making plays left, right, and center as they run a screen to our all out blitz and they respond with a touchdown. This is the craziest game of the year. Now we move on to the last half of our senior season with a state championship on the line. Franklin gets the ball to start. Defense needs to set a tone with a stop. Second and in inches here. Bang! That's exactly what we needed to start the half. An interception. Third and seven. Coach calls a screen pass and we lose a yard. I start yelling at Coach's play call here so he opts to go for it and give me a chance to earn his trust back. Fourth and nine. I'm looking down field. Standing in the pocket, being patient, giving my receivers a chance to get open. I roll it to my left. I see open grass and I get snipped by the ankle. Turnover on downs. By far the worst game of my year. Just got even worse. We go back to watching Knox on 39. He runs up the middle and he just carries our linebacker for a first down. I've never seen an opposing QB like this in my life. And on second and goal, Knox dumps it off for an easy touchdown. He's got 336 yards and four touchdowns on the day. I have 118 and two picks. That touchdown puts Franklin back up by two possessions as we break out for another big run to start out the drive. Third and seven. I'm looking for this comeback route. I've been making this throw all season. I'm just so uncomfortable playing without a lead. I've never played a game this bad in my life. Fourth down, coach wants to go for it again. Maybe our kicker lost his foot or something, but nobody is open downfield. I roll to my right and I see open field ahead. I take off and once again, I make a huge play with my legs. 18 carries, 194 and four touchdowns. At this point, I'm getting RB allegations like I'm Lamar. First and 10 option is called fumble. Curtis picks it up and he ends up going all the way. I am crumbling on the biggest stage of my life. This is the worst time to play my worst game. Fourth quarter, three possession gain. We need a score right here in the red zone. And I throw another pick. This might be the biggest choke job in the history of high school football. Turnover number four, but the defense bails me out and gets me the ball at midfield. Second and 10, I'm looking for any receiver to show up. Franklin, I've done an excellent job at containing you and no one is open downfield though so I take off of my legs once again and I make a clutch play to pick up the first down there six minutes left time is running out and I drop a dime by far the best throw of my game and I cap off the drive with a rushing touchdown to make it a 10 point game Knox is back on the ball third and 18 he throws it out for eight yards but it is short of the first down four minutes left in the game third and four we are one for six on third downs but I find Howell for the first second and eight every play matters now I throw off my back foot and my receiver drops it. The pressure is getting to all of us, but on third down, I hit the same exact receiver. He breaks a tackle and just like that, it is a three point game. Three fourteen left. Can the defense give me a chance? Oh, that's a drop pick. Knox is feeling the pressure. Second and 10, the handoff is stuffed. Third and nine, the Clarksville student section is riled up. Can the defense give me a chance here? Knox checks it down. 
And it's short. Defense gets me the ball back. Down three. 208 left. State championship on the line. I check it to my fullback to start the drive, but I missed a wide open touchdown. Second and one, I hit the out route to move the chains, keep the drive alive. Next play, I drop back and I make the biggest throw of my career. That gets us in field goal range right there. What a huge play right there as now we can start thinking about going for six to win the game. First and 10, coach calls an option and I missed the pitch. <laughs> Franklin recovers. I, I can't even commentate over this, man. I'm, I'm done. Fifth turnover of the game. I'm in genuine shock. I'm on the sideline with my helmet off thinking this game's over. Second and seven. One first down and this game is done. Hand off to Hopkins. Goes right up the middle and our linebacker does a good job standing him up. Setting him third and inches. 108 left in the game. If they get this, Franklin are the Tennessee State champions. Knox keeps it to himself and my defense comes through again. Coach quickly calls timeout and just like that, we have one last opportunity this could be the last drive we play together in high school gentlemen i drop back hitting you in for a quick four yard game we have to run hurry up as the clock is ticking i try taking off but i get sacked for negative six. Third and 12 20 seconds left rolling to my right nobody available downfield and i take yet another sack and so our season comes down to one last play fourth and 16 can we get our prayers answered no, we cannot. Franklin High becomes the state champions for Tennessee. We lose 45 to 42. I turned the ball over five times. I let the entire team, the coaching staff, the school, my family down. It was the worst feeling I've ever felt in my life as Jamal Knox completely outplayed me. However, I needed to move on quick and talk things over with my family. Will I continue to pursue a career in football over academics? And if I do, which college will I commit to? It is officially signing day and I have an extremely tough decision on my hands. And many schools offer me scholarships and also many schools that I could walk onto because I'm also the number one electrical engineer in the nation. Originally, I wanted to stay home and play for the Vols, but I was really insulted at Coach Heupel's offer of a third string spot on the roster. I also had a desire to play for big football schools like Alabama and Ohio State. I also knew my chances of playing at those schools and contributing to its success was pretty low. And finally, my mom was extremely angry after the state championship. I wanted to make her happy and make the family proud. So I've decided to commit to the U University of Stanford becoming a Cardinal. They offered me a full ride which covers my engineering undergrad degree which costs almost 100k a year. And on the football side, although I am the backup job, I believe I can take over the starting job as Stanford have had two straight 3-9 seasons. I'm sitting behind redshirt senior Ari Patu and the preseason polls have us ranked 51st in the nation. So we got to turn things around at Stanford and we start our first practice after learning the playbook with the scout team offense This is my first practice So I'm still learning the receivers how they run how they catch what the timing is and You can tell the chemistry wasn't there. I had some pretty bad misses right here on the comeback That's way outside and then right up the middle of the post route and I miss him low after the first practice I remained as the backup as I'm still learning the playbook I'm still getting used to living out on the west coast without my family new class schedule and everything and I did not know it rained This hard on the west coast. It's our second practice before our upcoming game against San Jose Jose State University. This is the last chance I have to get a start for this first game, so I need to have a good practice. And the struggles continue as I throw a terrible anticipation pick right there. You know, I thought maybe our slot receiver can outrun the linebacker, but we move on. All right, very next one. Make a nice throw on the run to my boy Wilson again. He's becoming one of my favorite targets. We are running out of reps. I need to make some big plays to get the starting job before our opener. Play action here. I take a shot deep to see my receiver is a stab. I took a chance and that receiver repaid my faith. I actually don't know his name yet. I haven't met him yet. But on the very next play, I throw a screen pass to my running back. And that is how you learn names, Mr. Barrow. Catches in back-to-back -back touchdowns for us. We are now getting close to winning that starting drop. And it is the last rep of practice. Last play, I take another deep shot. Putting faith in the same receiver. But the DB makes a fantastic play on the ball. And we are the backup for the opener. I haven't been a backup since my junior year in high school. This brought back a lot of bad memories. And it was even worse watching Patu work. As the only time... Times I got on the field was as a holder after Patu cashed in touchdown after touchdown. Patu ends up blowing out SJSU in the first game, putting up 44 on their defense. I knew I had an uphill battle to win the starting job. Next game was against Army. We now have a position battle versus Patu. As I've been impressing coaches with my academics and my film room habits, They're giving me a chance and I cannot let it slip. Why is it raining again? 15 throws to the side to start off. We start out with a quick slant concept. I hit the receiver up the middle. Come back again with slants on our backside this time. Two for two to start practice. Now I started throwing the balls that I threw in high school. All right, right up the seams. But we have not done enough so far to convince Coach that 
I deserve to be the start until I threw this juicy peach. That throw and catch open mouths right there as I come back on play action and roll out to my right and I hit my receiver up the sideline. Last rep of practice, last chance to convince coaches that I should be the starter. I'm rolling to my right and I find my receiver back to my left who makes a spectacular catch and that officially made me the starting QB of the University of Stanford. When this news broke out, I became the man of the camp. If you had an ABG girlfriend, she's mine now. But with the popularity came with a lot of pressure. I have to carry the torch that John Elway and Andrew Luck passed down. Expectations were high. As we begin our debut of our collegiate journey at Army. My dad grew up in the Chinese Navy, so there was some extra tension with this game. First snap, we take under center. I read zone coverage, so I hit the comeback to my boy McKee for our first first down of our college career. Well, on third and nine, they rally and they get me down for a sack. We have to punt the ball. Defense gets us the ball back, though. I'm rolling out to my right, using my legs, generating time for my receivers to get open, and I find a first down to my boy McKee. Second and goal. I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. I step up in the pocket, and I flip it to McKee for our first college touchdown. But low key, our debut has been pretty disappointing so far. As in the third quarter, we are only up by four. I evade a sack for a safety, but then I take a sack. It's a terrible safety there, and of course, Army responds with a field goal to take the lead. My dad is definitely considering drowning his son at the moment watching this gameplay. Play action. We duck another sack. The O-line is not blocking at all, but we hit the open receiver for a first down. Fourth quarter here, second along. We find the hitch route. McKee who breaks a tackle and gets me a huge yak to set us up nicely in the red zone. He reminds me a little bit of New Year. Third and seven. I don't see any receiver open. O-line can't hold up, and we take another sack. O-line has done a terrible job blocking for us today, but we get the field goal to take the lead. Army marches all the way down to first and goal, and they hit a touchdown right over the middle. No idea what my defense is doing there, but we are at upset alert. This is one of the worst debuts I could imagine, but we have a chance to save it on this two-minute drill. Second and nine. I drop back. I look up the right sideline, and who else but McKee? He makes a big game. 46-yard receiver reception down the right sideline which puts us in prime position to score second and three i'm rolling out to my right looking for an open receiver i attract defenders with my legs i flip it out to my running back for a 14 yard game time to get clutch second and goal i see a nice route but my receiver drops it third and goal coach calls four verts i gotta take a shot to mckee he deserves it but the db makes a good play which brings us to fourth and goal and this one throw save us from a horrendous offensive debut army drops eight i look in the corner there's spin and I underthrow it. There was space in the back corner of the end zone, but the ball was too flat. And we get upset by Army. We only put up 13 points on the scoreboard. And we start our college career 0-1. My job is instantly in jeopardy, so I needed to come out with a good practice session. I felt like all the eyes were on me now. Every little move that I did was gonna be inspected, especially with all the expectations and losing such a bad game. But moving on, we retain our starting job, and it is our home day debut against Arizona State. You know the baddies are in the crowd. Second and ten. I'm looking to push the ball deep. And my receiver makes a spectacular catch mossing the DB. Which then led us to this play right here. Finding McKee wide open in the end zone for our first home touchdown. However, after the first drive, the offensive struggles continue. We're talking drops on third down. We're talking multiple sacks. And by multiple I meant back to back to back sacks for a safety. Emory Jones scores a walk-in touchdown to put Arizona State up two possessions. And the struggles to not stop there another sack taken followed by another drop out the flat route i'm getting frustrated surely by this point we won't have any more drops on third down oh wait another drop and to top it all off we throw our first collegiate interception and we lose our second straight game to the sun devils yes i played a terrible game but my offensive teammates did not help at all play callings off coaches yet to call an option run in our first two games receivers can't seem to get much separation and our o-line can't block us soul right now. This offense is clearly struggling. Next game against Washington State and it's more of the same. Crucial drop on a deep bomb and we only score six points in the first half. This is absolutely unacceptable. We are losing by two possessions to a one and three football team. Second and three here. Receivers getting no separation at all and I take another sack. The coach has seen enough.
off. He yanks me up the game as I've only put up three field goals against one and three Washington State. An absolute horrific start to my collegiate career as we not only lose the game, but our starting job as well. Coach rolls with Patu for the next game as my confidence is at an all-time low. But he throws an interception here and the struggles continue. Maybe it's not the quarterback's fault as we only put up three points in the first half. The fans around the stadium are booing. This is not what they want to see and Coach subs me back in for the second half. I feel like the disrespect has gone too far. It's time to show everyone why I was one of the top recruits out of my class. I am not at Stanford for my academics. I am here for football. Second and A, I'm rolling out to my right receiver, still not getting open, so I decide to do it myself. I started to use my legs, and that started generating open opportunities. On second and go, we finally cash in a touchdown to McKee to take the lead against number 20, Washington. Third and five, I'm moving the legs again. I'm rolling to my left, throwing back to my right, and McKee makes a grab of his life. What a catch right there, and now the crowd is back involved. 13-7, less than two minutes left on third down. Coach calls a handoff. We hand it off to our running back, and he starts to take off. It's a race to the end zone. Who will get there? Touchdown, Stanford. And we get our first collegiate win against Washington. Still plenty of room to improve on for sure, but it's nice to get a win above our ranked school. Brandon Barrow gets player of the game, and let's see if this win right here turns our season around. We head into a rainy night in Utah. The number 18 ranked school in the nation. We start out with a nice kick return to put us in good field position. Third and 11. I'm moving my eyes to the right, but I throw back to my left. For the first down right there, I definitely fooled the safety with my eyes. Even though they are small... He, he, trust me, he, he got fooled. We hand the ball off on first and go to my boy Barrow for an easy touchdown to silence the crowd on the road. Second quarter, we are up 10 to 3. Coach calls play action. I'm rolling to my right. And I throw a deep ball. Moonshot right in the bread basket for six. That's my official arrival to college football. 53 yard touchdown on a dime to McKee. This is what Cardinal fans have been waiting to see. This is what they've been waiting for. First and 10 in the second quarter, we are up big against Utah. I hit McKee on the outside and he lowers the shoulder, makes a great move. He is running to the pylon and he gets tackled right before the end zone. But on the half yard line, I hand it off to my boy Barrow and he cashes in another touchdown. The offense is coming together at the perfect time as I hit it up the seams to my tight end. We're back down in the red zone and we gotta feed the beast. That boy Barrow has been running like an absolute mania. They cannot tackle him and we get another touchdown. 31 points on the board. I roll out to my right and I find my receiver deep down the field. We're developing chemistry. Second and goal to make it a four possession game. I'm rolling to my right. I draw attention from defenders and I flip it out to my receiver for another touchdown. 45 points away against number 18 Utah in their stadium on a rainy night. This is what Stanford fans wanted to see. Really big win for us as I throw for 404 yards and two touchdowns. And after stomping UCLA at home, we are starting to build momentum heading into our toughest game of the year. Number 12 ranked Oregon State Beaver 7-0. We're looking for our second upset away in the rain. All eyes on us in this nationally broadcasted Pac-12 conference game. Can we pull off the impossible as Oregon State starts out with a touchdown? This is arguably the biggest game since my high school championship game as everybody around the nation wants to see how the Chinese QB will deal with the pressure. First offensive snap of the game. We call play action. I roll to my right. I try to find a corner out, but it is intercepted. The big game woes continue. My ass crack is sweaty. We give up a field goal from that turnover and we are down 10-0 away. Terrible start for us, but I come back and I respond with a dart to my left. Up the seams to my tight end for a 37 yard gain. And then we finish the drive off with a nice little throw on the run to McKee for the touchdown. What a response by Stanford as we head into the third quarter here, 24 to 10. I love a nice ball over the middle to my boy Wilson, which then I come back with another ball over the middle to the other side. And we end the drive off with an ISO handoff to my boy Harris to make it a one score game. We are nearing the two minute warning. Defense needs to get a stop to give us a chance. They lob it up deep to our left side and who is there? Just in coverage, wide open touchdown. Well, I'm not finish just yet. I'm looking deep to get a quick touch on to make it a one possession game. And I find a hole up the middle of a cover two for a 48 yard touchdown. What a play. Defense needs to get us a stop as we still have three timeouts. I am praying for another chance on the sideline. The Beavers are going to run the ball here on second and seven. We make a tackle. Coach quickly calls the timeout and it is now the play of the game. Third and four. They try a bubble screen and it is picked up. Benjamin Hudson, the inside linebacker comes up with an interception. So here we go. 56 seconds left. Down by seven away against Oregon State in the rain against the 12th 
12th ranked team, what wells I then? Second and 10, I'm looking deep, nobody open. I roll out to my right and I throw it away. But I take a huge hit on that play and I stay on the ground. I landed shoulder first on the turf and I am out. It's injury to my throwing arm in the biggest game of the year. Just so disappointing. Fourth and nine, our final chance to win this game. Can Patu pull it out? He scrambles forward and he fumbles the ball. Oregon State survives the upset. They come out with a win and I received some bad news from our training staff after the game. My shoulder injury was much more severe than originally thought. We are required to have surgery on my shoulder and I am shut out for the rest of my freshman season. After a rocky up and down season, we end with a seven and six record. I only averaged two and a half yards per rush. The Stanford play style was definitely not a good fit. The Florida Gators ended up winning the national championship and we have a decision to make. We have entered the transfer portal and I have a huge decision to make. After an up and down season with Stanford, I was unsure if I wanted to stay. The offensive line wasn't developed, the receivers could hardly catch a ball, and the offensive playbook did not suit my play style. Over the offseason, I went back home to discuss this with my parents, and my mom thought it was a no-brainer. She was like, son, what the hell, man? How can you leave Stanford? No way, no how. But coming back home to play in Tennessee, or heading out to a big school like OU or Alabama, were definitely schools that I wanted to entertain. The max capacity at Stanford Stadium was also around 50,000, which is definitely not bad, but comparing to some of the schools that were recruiting me that had over 100,000 seats and so much national media coverage. I also felt like I was kind of missing out in that aspect as well. But I decided to listen to my mom once again and come back to Stanford. We had a wide receiver room full of juniors and seniors. Barrow is one of the best running backs in the nation. Senior Jack Lehrer is leading the defensive side of the ball and the preseason polls have us ranked 25th in the nation. So after a long offseason of bulking up and upping my game, we are ready to start our sophomore season against Southern Miss. And we start out firing with a dart to my left for our first touchdown of the year. Then we later on work back to our right side for the touchdown again as we stomp over Southern Miss to start the year 1-0. We face a much tougher challenge in week 2 against number 13 ranked Washington. I'm rolling to my left looking for an open receiver. The D linemen are catching up to me and I make this absurd throw to Higgins who gets some great yak. And he picks up 45 yards which ends off with a Barrow touchdown to tie the game up. Later on in the third, third and goal. Nobody is QB spying me. Are you kidding me? Washington did you do your homework? We gotta get clutch now in order to seal our first ranked win of the year. I'm rolling out to my right looking for a receiver and I find Higgins again who toe taps a TD to go up two possessions and we win against number 13 Washington to start out 2-0. My first play of the game of the year. Stanford is starting to turn heads. We are now the number 22 team in the nation as we are back home for our home debut. Washington State is the opponent and I look for a throw that nobody in the stadium could find. That's all those years of trigonometry coming into play there. Nobody saw that angle at all. Later on in the game, I'm rolling to my right. I'm looking deep. I'm giving my receiver a chance. Michael Wilson mosses him. Well, he, he kind of did. I, I don't really know if that's a touchdown or not, but hey, I, I'm taking it. We stop over Washington State over the air and on the ground as we go for six total touchdowns and 323 passing yards. Stanford fans are ecstatic at my play so far this year as we are now the number 20 team in the nation. We are slowly moving up the polls. However, there were plenty of one-loss teams ahead of us, even two-loss teams. We still weren't getting the respect that I felt like we deserved. Maybe it's a little bit of ALM. I don't know. We keep it moving down to Utah. I drop back on second and goal. I'm looking to the outside and I put it on the dime to Elijah Higgins. Him and Wilson have been going off this year. We finally had an offseason to work with the two and it clearly pays off as they throw a deep dive to Michael Wilson right in his bucket. That is just physics. I'm calculating the amount of air I'm putting under that ball, ladies and gentlemen. Nobody is thinking the game of football like me as I keep throwing tutties. I keep playing like this, I might win a Heisman as I go for five touchdowns. We start the season 4-0, and which is good enough to be the number 16 team and the nation. Stanford fans are going crazy right now. They have not seen a team that looks this good since 2011. And we move on to game five against Oregon State. The team that not only beat me last year, but injured my shoulder and ended my freshman year early. I was extremely locked in to start this game as I go one for one, two for two, three for three, touchdown, four for four, five for five, six for six, seven for seven, Touchdown! 8 for 8! 9 for 9! 10 for 10! Touchdown! And we survive a near upset by Oregon State to move to 5 and 0! We are now the number 9 team in the nation! The first time Stanford has been top 10 since 2018! We're also the number 3 passing offense in college football! And it's time to put that passing offense on display back home against ASU! First play, I look for my slot receiver over the middle for a 23 yard game! And then I come right back to him for the touchdown to start the game off! Next quarter, I start 
out with a throw to my new tight end, sophomore Bradley Archer. We call him Big Boy Brad around here. And that is for good reason, because this guy is a monster. Middle of the second here, I roll into my right. I throw a terrible interception. I thought I had the check down there, but then the defender lays his body weight on me. And I get injured on the follow through of the play. This keeps me out all the way until the fourth quarter. And our lead has been reduced to four. Our backup QB needs to seek employment. This football is definitely not for his ass. 246 left. We need a score to ice the game. Don't see anyone open downfield. I'm rolling back to buy some time. I evade the sack. I come back. I evade another one. Get your cameras out, ladies and gentlemen. I'm rolling it up and I hit my receiver for a first down. I was not getting taken down right there and we ended off with a barrel touchdown. We defeat ASU to stay undefeated and move to 6-0 on the season. And we are now the number six team in the nation. College football playoff discussions are starting for Stanford as we are ahead of teams like Alabama and reigning champions Florida. But not only that, I am now in the Heisman Watch. The only QB in the discussion. Momentum is picking up for the boy. All that offseason work is coming to fruition. As we move on to our next game against Notre Dame. I thought it was going to be the first Asian versus Asian QB battle we've ever seen. But I find out my brother, my cousin, Tyler Buckner has been benched. Come on, bro. They're three and four. They're unranked for a reason. But this atmosphere was insane, ladies and gentlemen. By far the loudest crowd I've ever played in front of. 80,000 screaming in the stands as we start out with a near pick. The crowd is roaring as on second and 10. I got to throw it out of bounds. We start off 0-2. Third and long. I stay composed in the pocket. I'm looking and I fire a strike up the middle to Higgins for a first down, which is followed up by a hook route to Wilson. Who brushes the Notre Dame defenders off like they're nothing for some extra yak. First and goal. I'm rolling out to my right. I'm using my legs. Notre Dame in man coverage and I walk in for an easy touchdown to start the game off. Later on in the second, I hit big boy Brad on the out route. He demolishes that defender for the touchdown. This is a grown man, ladies and gentlemen. He is not a sophomore as we head into the fourth. I'm looking at who else up the middle but big boy Brad. We're here to get it back in blood for my brother Buck. Now, how dare you bench a fellow Asian f this bald Italian. Give me my brother his job back, Angeli. We come out of Notre Dame with our best away win of the year and by far the most hostile crowd I've ever played in front of. And we are officially in a college football playoff spot. The number four team in the nation is the Stanford Cardinal. Jalen Miro joins me in the Heisman discussion as the only QBs. And we play our highest ranked opponent of the year, number eight Oregon. Pac-12 matchup as well. This is the game of the year for us. Away in Eugene as they have one of the best pass rushers in the nation in Kyler Casper, who's paired with Christian Gonzalez, one of the best corners in the nation. So our game plan was clear. We wanted to slide protection towards Casper the entire game. And we're not throwing at Gonzalez's side. We're throwing at number 12. Whoever that guy is, he's getting all the action today. Defense also is going to have their hands full as Oregon has one of the best receiving corps in the nation. But I believe in my dogs as Bo Nix starts with the ball. I didn't know he was black. And he comes out firing with a deep ball down the field and it's picked off by Bonner. What a start for our defense right that is exactly what we needed. And we respond with a touchdown up the right side to Higgins. Who finds a hole in the zone. What a catch. What a start. The Black Bow next is back on the ball. He's got plenty of time in the pocket. No idea what my D-line are doing. But he throws another interception. Two straight interceptions for Bow Nicks as we are rolling to our right. And we find who else? Big Boy Brad for another touchdown to go up 14 to 3. And we're still following the game plan. We're not throwing to the left. Where Christian Gonzalez resides, we are still threading balls deep to the right. And we cash out a touchdown at the end of this drive for a 21 to 3 lead. Third and inches here. We can't hold up protection against Casper, so we have to throw it away. Fourth and inches, and coach said I'm aggressive. We are not laying the foot off the gas as we hand it off the barrel for the first down. And I gotta repay my coach's trust, so I'm looking back to the right side. You know who I'm finding? Michael Wilson, who routes up Tucker for the touchdown. But Bo Nix says not so fast as he leads his team into a one possession situation. 108 remaining. Can the defense get a stop for the win? Bo Nix drops back. Deep ball to Lowe, who gets a step on our DB for the first down. What a game. Nix comes back second down, ropes one over the middle to Coda. And we get called for a flag for face mask, which puts Oregon on the three-yard line in two plays. Defense is letting us down on this last drive, and Caldwell walks in to tie the game up. So here we go, 41 seconds left in the fourth. Will I choke again on the biggest stage? Let's find out. I throw a ball up the seams to Tremaine for a beautiful start to the drive. Next play, I'm looking to attack the right side to 
Taku once again, but he makes a great play on the ball. Luckily, he didn't get his feet in, and we survive a near scare. 16 seconds left, third and five. All we gotta do is get in field goal range. I hit the out route again. Coach quickly calls timeout, and we have a chance for one last play to get us in better field goal position. I start scrambling out. I'm gonna do it myself. I try to cut back in there, but luckily, I stepped out of bounds. Which beautifully sets up a game-winning field goal opportunity. Bang! What a game. What an ending right there as we take down number eight, Oregon, to remain undefeated and on top of the Pac-12. I throw for 314 and four touchdowns and I move up the Heisman rankings. But more importantly, we are now the number three ranked team in the nation. And after back-to-back -back wins against UCLA and USC, we are now the number two ranked team in the nation at 10 and 0. And now comes the big game. One of our biggest rivals, we arrive at Cal. We enter the second half with a two possession lead. We are officially in danger of an upset, ladies and gentlemen. First and 10, I layer the ball to my crossing route and he gains me 46 yards to set up the field goal to make it a one possession game defense gets a stop and we're back in a scoring position i pitch the ball to my boy barrow and there is no stopping this man he is getting in the end zone we follow that touchdown up with another field goal to put us up four with one minute and two seconds remaining in the game all we need is a stop to survive the upset first and ten tagaloa throws a nice little four yard game and the golden bears are running hurry up offense this is electrifying football ladies and gentlemen they really just do that to spike the ball? Third and six. This could be a big play in the game, but Tagaloa makes a nice play over the middle to, oh, to pick up the first down, which then he comes back with another out route to Plummer for a nice 14-yard game. 34 seconds left, first and 10. Out oh, my! This is why white DBs aren't in the game. Tagaloa going through his progressions. He looks deep. This could be game. Are you kidding me? A walk-off touchdown on the last drive of the game. And Cal completes the upset. They hand us our first loss of the season. We lose the big game and this dropped us all the way down to number nine in the nation. And with just one game left against unranked army, our chances of making it into the playoff were really, really low. But I still had to run the score up with four 50 yards and four touchdowns because in the sport you just never know sometimes college football voters they love a great story and they've never seen an asian qb like me in their life so that concludes our regular season we finished as the number seven team in the nation heading into a bye week before our pac 12 championship game i go back home to tennessee and my mom isn't happy she wants me to break all the records and bring all the awards home and i came back empty-handed she did make me dinner this time though because i was announced as an award finalist for the maxwell award the walter camp award and the o'brien award most important Importantly though, I am the only QB in the running for the Heisman as Milrow faded out. So after a great two week break, spending it with family and my math tutor, I fly back out to the West and now it is on to the Pac-12 championship game. This is our last chance to make it into the playoff. Bama and Georgia play each other so one loser could fall out. We would need Nebraska to lose against Indiana, but even if that game is close, we have a chance. So we meet again with ASU, the number 17 team in the nation and the number one team out of the Pac-12 South. And I'm locked in to start this game. First pass, I high point it to my boy, big boy, Brad. And make that back-to-back -back passes to Brad, which I thought that was a touchdown. But we do finish the opening drive with a touchdown to put up six on the board. ASU comes back down the field and gets a touchdown to respond. We come right back down the field on first and goal. Rolling out to my right, nobody looks open, but I find a way. To fit it in the end zone for another touchdown, and that breaks another record. The most passing touchdowns in Stanford history. Breaking Andrew Luck's previous record. This is one of the biggest accomplishments of my life. And this one got out of hand quick. We were playing great complimentary football. Defense was going crazy. Offense was unstoppable. We are killing ASU as I look for my Heisman moment. Team bump to Wilson for the touchdown. 71 yard reception. And I end up throwing for seven touchdowns this game, which breaks yet another school record for most passing touchdowns in a game set by John Elway in 1980. A 42 year record has been broken as we win the Pac-12 championship. Stanford's first Pac-12 championship since 2015. The Chinese QB has brought a trophy to the far. Eight total touchdowns for the boy as I win Pac-12 championship MVP honors. And we are officially champions of the West, winning 56 to 20. I finally get to bring some hardware home to my Asian mom. This is the best day of my life. But now is the moment of truth. Did our performance convince the voters? Can we make the playoff? Before we get into all that we have won the most prestigious individual award in college football the heisman trophy winner is a chinese
Japanese man, a Stanford electrical engineer, has won the Heisman. I never thought I'd see this day, but China officially runs football. We've also won the Maxwell Award for Best All-Around Player in Collegiate Football. And we get our third award, the O'Brien Award, which is awarded to the best college football quarterback. We finish with three awards, but we finish as the number five team in the nation, just missing out on a playoff spot. There's no way we won the Pac-12 as the Heisman winner, and I don't make it into the playoff, man. That's gotta be ALM or something. But we have a chance to leave with more silverware as we get to play in the infamous Rose Bowl. A game that has made legends such as Vince Young and Mark Sanchez. I wanted to add my legacy on that list as we play Indiana. They start the Rose Bowl off with a touchdown. Head into the second quarter here. I hit the hook route to my boy Higgins, who escapes from the DB, and he takes it all the way. 60-yard touchdown to put us on the board. We move to the second half, tied at 14. First and 10. I'm looking, I'm looking. I got plenty of time. I'm looking downfield. Up to Wilson, who makes the toe tap grab for a 50-yard game. And he sets a school record as well. Most receiving yards in a season since Troy Walters in 1999. That's my boy Michael Wilson right there, man. I felt like he should have won the Belinikov. Third and six. Still a tie game. I'm looking. Nobody is open. I'm rolling out. I'm running for the end zone. One man to beat. Air Hefe is cleared for takeoff. Heisman moment right there, ladies and gentlemen. I want the Rose Bowl. Less than one minute left in our first bowl game. We are up by seven. Basilak drops back. He whips the ball to his right. And Cooper makes a ridiculous touchdown grab. Defense once again couldn't come up with a stop to win the game. And we are headed to overtime. Our first ever OT game in college. We will start on defense. And it just takes two plays for Basilek to get into the end zone to go up in OT. If we do not score on this drive, this game is over. Indiana playing very stout defense in the red zone here. I'm having trouble. I got to throw the ball away. Third and 11. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm scrambling. I look to gain it by my legs, but I come up short. So it's fourth and six for the game. Need to get in the end zone here. What will I do? I snap the ball here. I read man coverage across the board. So I take off knowing there's no spice set and I get in the end zone. To keep our Rose Bowl hopes alive. Now we start on offense for second OT. I'm rolling out to my left. I'm looking for an open receiver. I see Higgins. Great dot at the left corner of the end zone and we take the lead again. But Indiana comes back and they tie the game right up with a pitch. So now we are in third overtime. Defense gets a stop to make it third and 12. Basilak. Look at Look it, look it, throw it outside, and it's incomplete. Indiana settles for a field goal, so now we just need a touchdown to win. First and ten, I roll out to my right, and I find Falcons for the first down. However, Indiana's defense does not break as on third and goal. Looking to clinch the Rose Bowl, I take off. But the defender makes a clean tackle. We have to settle for a field goal again. So now we are in fourth overtime. The longest game I've ever played, and I hand it off to Barrow. He finds the hole, blockers ahead, and he gets in the end zone. And coach opts to go for two. We are getting aggressive. I roll out to my right. No one spies me again. What a mistake. Now Indiana needs a touchdown and a two-point conversion to keep the game going. Bonds almost scores on the first play off a screen, but he gets in the end zone with an easy walk-in touchdown. But here it is. One stop and we are Rose Bowl champions. What will the defense do about it? And they pick it off. Ladies and gentlemen, the Stanford Cardinal are your 2023 Rose Bowl champions. Another trophy brought home for the Cardinal fans. And a great way to cap off our sophomore season as we win a 4 OT game against Indiana. It was a fantastic year for me as I have put the nation on notice. I am rising in mock drafts for the NFL and my game is only gonna get better. However, I don't know how good this roster will be next year. Michael Wilson and Brandon Barrow are both heading off into the NFL and I want to compete for a national championship. Do I enter the transfer portal to go to a football school to solely focus on my football career? After carrying Stanford to a Pac-12 championship and becoming the first Chinese QB to win the Heisman, I was faced with my biggest life decision. Although I'm projected as the Heisman favorite for the upcoming year and am mocked as a first round caliber QB, my Asian mother still doesn't believe in the football dream as she wants me to work a stable job at the Big Five, also known as Fang. My grades saw a huge decline last year as I devoted so much time into improving my game, which led me to believe that there were only two paths. Either I commit to football or I forfeit my NFL dreams and focus on academics. Even though I was projected to be the Heisman winner, Stanford entered the preseason season polls at number 42 as all of my receivers and defensive stars left for the NFL. If I stayed at Stanford, we were likely going to go backwards as that would mean I focus more on my degree and eventually give up on my dreams. But I know I have the talent and have what it takes to be a starting QB in the NFL. So without telling my family, I have decided to enter the transfer portal to seek out more options. A lot of schools
showed interest, as it is extremely rare for a Heisman winner to transfer the following year. However, my list was narrowed down to seven schools. Michigan State, Penn State, Florida, West Virginia, Ohio State, Clemson, and Alabama. My main priority was to play with a contending roster, but I also wanted to go back out to the East. These seven schools also presented me with NIL offers worth hefty amounts. I wanted to start profiting off my own name, so the deals were really attractive. And after secretly visiting all seven schools over the offseason, I had made my choice. I have decided to transfer to the University of Florida, becoming a Gator. Anthony Richardson headed off to the draft, and Jalen Kitna arrested and dismissed from the team. A vacant QB spot was open on the roster. They have one of the best receivers in college football, Xavier. Xavier Henderson, three fantastic tight ends, and one of the best secondaries in the nation. And with an offensive-minded head coach and Billy Napier, you are looking to become a powerhouse in the SEC. However, this decision did not sit well with my family. My mom found out my decision through the news as I was too afraid to let her down in person. I know she is incredibly disappointed in me, but this is a decision that I hope and pray will make sense to her in the long run. Ranked as the number 12 team in the preseason polls, we were ready to start our road to the playoff with our first game against Coastal Carolina, and the Swamp is active. They haven't seen a Heisman QB since Tim Tebow as we start out with a play action pass on third and short. I scramble out the right side and show the fans my running ability, bringing them shades of Tebow. And we end the drive off with our first touchdown as a Gator to Henderson. This could be the start of the best college QB wide receiver duo. One of the main reasons I transferred to Florida was the system. The fit and the scheme reminded me of when I played in high school. As Coach Napier calls a QB blast up the middle for my second touchdown. Which is a play call I haven't heard since my high school days at Clarksville. First and goal coach calls another option run but this time we pitch it out to our running back Montrell Johnson who cashes in for the touchdown as we take the first game at home 27 to 7 win for our debut as I come up with my first player of the game as a Gator throwing for 354 yards our second game at home back at the swamp we blow out our neighbors Florida Atlantic to move to 2-0 Gator fans are loving the football they are watching so far as they throw for 343 and four touchdowns third game of the season we are ranked eighth in the nation up against Mizzou in the rain and my record Corrupted. But we survived the near upset and move up to the number six team in the nation. And now we are playing my hometown school, Tennessee. Although Tennessee is one and two, they are looking to kill me as I did not commit to the balls out of high school and when I transferred. Third and goal here. Coach calls another option, putting the balls in the hands of his Heisman QB. I decide to keep it to myself and I bulldoze all the way into the end zone to put us up two possessions. Defense once again holds the balls to just a field goal and puts us on the field for a two minute drill opportunity. I start out with a quick slant to my boy Xavier. Then I come back to my tight end. I don't know how to say that name. And Gator fans, get used to this. We do not settle for field goals around here as I snap a ball to my left side. To who else but Xavier Henderson for the touchdown. And we end up routing the Vols, blowing them out 34 to 6. This game meant a lot to me, man, as Coach Heupel never showed me much love despite being the number two QB coming out of Tennessee. But the team starts sleeping a little bit after the big win as I throw a terrible interception here against Kentucky. We cannot afford to drop any of these games if we want to make the playoff. Kentucky a basketball school. This has to be a win, all right? But we are down by four, and I need a touchdown with one minute and 29 seconds left. First and 10 here. I check it down to my boy Trevor Etienne, who makes a nice move for a nice six-yard gain. Second and four. I'm looking up the seam. Oh, and it's dropped. That was a big play opportunity here. Third and four. I'm buying time for my receivers, but nobody gets open as I get hit. And now it's the biggest play of the game. Fourth and four. 57 seconds left. The number six team in the nation is on the verge of an upset. I'm rolling out to my right. Nobody but he looks open, so I look deep. Ball in the air, and it's swatted out of the air by the Kentucky DB. I make a terrible read for an incomplete pass, and I turn the ball over on downs. And this is going to be game right here. But wait, Kentucky responds with a mistake of their own, and we get another chance. 46 seconds left. This is our last opportunity. First and 10. I snap the ball. I'm looking deep. Nobody's there, and I take a bad sack. Coach has to call a timeout. Second and 15. I'm looking for the corner route, but it almost gets intercepted. So it's third and 15. Coach Napier calls a levels concept, and I hit my Tight end on the deep end, and he gets enough for the first down, 15-yard reception. The drive stays alive here as now I'm working back to my left. Corner route outside, toe tap, sway, which stops the clock at 25 seconds, first and 10. I roll back out to my right, nobody is there, but they are in man coverage. So I take off, and I try to get out of bounds. The clock stops at 18 seconds, but then it starts running. Coach Napier didn't call time out. He thought I was out of bounds, too. So I start clapping my hands. I'm rushing the snap. Four verts. I'm looking to give a receiver a chance. But the DB makes a great play on the 
ball and intercepts it. And we drop a game against 1-3 Kentucky to move us all the way down to number 17 in the nation. We also move down the Heisman ranks as Henderson and Rodgers move up. And the games don't get any easier as we head to Death Valley to play in one of the best college football atmospheres you will find at LSU. Second play of the game. I fake it to my running back and I'm off. I make the perfect read once again for a 58 yard rush. And I finish off the drive with another read option touchdown. I'm loving the system that Billy Napier has constructed for me as I am rushing a lot more than I was at Stanford. But it is 21-21 heading into the fourth. LSU starts the fourth with an immediate touchdown. We are once again in a fourth quarter crunch time situation. But I start out the fourth with a moon ball to Henderson who breaks the Florida school record for most career receiving yards in a Gators uniform. This might be the most talented receiver I've ever played with in my life. But we end off with an instant response to Burke to tie the game right back up. Defense gets a stop to force a punt and we are in position to take a lead. Third down. LSU is hyping the crowd up. I block out the noise and I find my go-to guy Henderson for a first. Second and five. Coach calls another speed option. I make the right read once again. I fake the pitch and I run for a big game to put us in prime position to win the game. Second and goal. 48 seconds left. I'm going through all my progression and I find Burr who sits in the end zone and catches the game winning touchdown as we respond from the bad loss with a huge win against LSU after blowing out Old Dominion 55 to 21 scoring seven touchdowns we enter week 10 up against number two Georgia the highest ranked team I have ever played in my career who are led by a Heisman candidate Brock Bowers and have the best corner in the nation in Kali Ringo we have to win this game to make a statement to the committee as to why I deserve to be in the college football playoff. My first career neutral field game in Jacksonville. Vandergriff starts out with the ball and he immediately throws an interception. What a start for the Gators right here as we get the ball off a turnover. And I make them pay for their mistake with a hitch route to my boy Henderson to put up six on the ball. However, Brock Vandergriff strings together a brilliant drive and he ends it off rushing for a touchdown to knock the game right back up. The Bulldogs then force a three and out and Vandergriff is back with a strike deep down the right side to put the Bulldogs in the lead. Second and three here. Two minutes left. I'm rolling out to my right. The Bulldogs do not spot. I cut back in. Four extra yardage. 21 yard gain. And we respond right back with a touchdown in the corner of the end zone. Two Reynolds with a sweet footwork which is then followed up with a big stop by our defense. They give me the ball with 30 seconds left in the second quarter. Second and four. I'm rolling back out to my right. I'm looking deep. The safety makes a huge mistake as he thinks I'm going to my tight end. And Henderson is wide open for the touchdown. Chop, chop, chop. We then double dip out of half with a field goal to go up by 10. And our defense was acting different this game. Boom! Laying out the hammer to force a punt. And you know I had to reciprocate the energy. Georgia sends a blitz. But I find a way to get the ball to who else? Henderson who spins off Ringo like he's nothing. He's having a game as well with two touchdowns on the day. And we drive all the way down to third and three. A touchdown right here makes it three possession. I roll out. I don't see anyone open down the field. I break away from that fatty and I rush in for the touchdown. And we are up three possessions against the number two team team in the nation. We have to be putting the voters on notice right now. Number 16 is not a fair ranking for this team as when we are at our best, we are easily one of the best teams in the nation as Vandegrift throws another pick, which caps the game off 31 to 14. We blow out the Bulldogs for our biggest game as a Gator in our first ever neutral field game. And as we torch the best secondary in college football, we are now up to number two on the Heisman race. But somehow, someway, we are only number 12 in the nation. The Committee still have Georgia ranked over us. This made absolutely no sense to me as there were plenty of one loss teams ahead of us. And I felt like that was one of the best wins in college football this year. But we still have four games remaining to get in a playoff spot as we are back in the swamp to host six and three Vandy. First and ten deep in Vanderbilt zone. Read option. The linebacker gets full. I'm taking it off. <laughs> <laughs> I destroy the Vanderbilt defenders there. 4-6 to open up the scoring. And this game got away from Vanderbilt fast. As we could not stop scoring and I could not stop running. 30 yard touchdown run there and to cap off the game. We throw a deep ball to my boy Reynolds scoring 49 points. Once again trying to put the committee on notice. But we only move up one spot.
spot to number 11 and our chances are getting slim. Three games left as our last ranked opponent on the schedule is number 19, South Carolina. Away in the rain, there is an increase in sense of urgency as I came to Florida to win a national championship and a national championship only. I felt like the only way we were going to win this game is if we absolutely blew them out of the water. So we came out firing in the first quarter, throwing 225 yards and two touchdowns, and we did not lay our foot off the gas as I hit this 51-yard deep shot to Henderson, who breaks another school record for single-season receiving yards. This guy is insane. And then we end the drive off with six to our slot receiver up the middle of the field. Now it is late in the third. And oh my god, that is not what I think it is. My eyes must be getting full. Do not tell me that South Carolina put a white DB on Xavier Henderson. No! I had to double check. I, I squinted my little Asian eyes just to make sure what I was seeing was true. And it absolutely was. So I immediately hot route to a stream. And look at that release, man. There was no chance. I zip it immediately. Did not need to make a read. Touchdown Gators as we blow out the game cost. 49 to 7 in this SEC matchup. But we do not move at all. Matter of fact, nobody moved as every team in the top 10 won. So now there's only two games left in our schedule to try and make a difference. First game is it's Ole Miss. This time, I forgot to hit record. But after winning 41 to 13, we moved down in the rankings. We moved down. Miami, Ohio moved up from 13 to 7. How is that possible? We blew out Georgia. They're ahead of us. We beat Ole Miss by 28 points. And we moved down two spots. Let me repeat that. We, we won by 28 and moved down two spots. I hate to pull the race card, but this committee has to be racist. I'm the leading Heisman candidate with a 10 and one team in the SEC. And I am not in the top 10. I'm 13. It just makes no sense at all. They have three Pac-12 teams in the top four, which I all dominated last year as well. This committee is an absolute joke, man, as we enter our final game of the season against our biggest rivals, Florida State. I come out and ball regardless because I know this game means a lot to Gator fans. But I just feel that no matter what I do, I can't make it into the playoff with this committee that is put in place. We win our final regular season game. I go for five 14 yards and four touchdowns. We are ranked in the top 10, but I've lost all hope at this point. There's a two-loss team ahead of us. Miami, Ohio, and Ball State ahead of us, all because we lost a nail-biter to Kentucky. It really felt like I came to the SEC all for nothing. At this point, I started thinking about declaring to the NFL because I just felt like there was nothing I could do to get into the top four of a college football playoff no matter how well I played. We have a chance to become SEC champions here against Texas a and I'm taking my anger out on this a and defense as I break out, run through a tackle, and another one. Got one man ahead, skiddly diddly by Heisman moment right there ladies and gentlemen touchdown Gators halfway through the third quarter we are down by six and I am not looking to lose this game as I make a ridiculous crossbody throw to Xavier Henderson who breaks another school record for most career receptions as a Gator this guy is nuts and we end the drive on with a screen pass to my boy Trevor Etienne to put us up by one but a and instantly responds with a field goal and now we have to run the two minute drill to win the SEC championship there is no way as a Chinese man I am going home without a trophy as on first and ten I leak out to my left and I cut back into the right for a big game to start the drive out. Then I start making pro reads, taking what the defense gives me. Three straight checkdowns to move the stick. And then I find my boy Burke up the right side who makes a nice grab. I put us on first and goal to ice the game. I'm rolling out to my left and I find my fullback for the game winning walk off touchdown right there as the Florida Gators are your new SEC champions. 31 to 25 against Texas a and as I go for 215 in the air and 219 on the ground to win MVP. And we have more hardware on the way as I went back to back Heisman. Barely edging out Travion Henderson for the trophy. Absolutely insane how I have not made the college football playoffs. I am the best QB in the nation for two years in a row. I also take home the Maxwell, Walter Camp, and the O'Brien bringing four trophies home. And we finish as the seventh best team in the nation. What a joke. I set out the Sugar Bowl as I truly believe I am leaving for the NFL. As the college football committee does not want to see a Chinese QB in the playoffs. I don't want to get injured going into the draft process. But my mother finally called me and we talked for the first time in eight months. She says, son, why you no play in the Sugar Bowl? How dare you not play? You had a chance to win another trophy and you don't play? If you don't bring home the national championship, I am disowning you. So now I have a decision to make. Do I try to complete my dreams of winning a college football championship or do I declare for the draft to the NFL?
After a frustrating junior year, not making it into the college football playoff for the third year in a row, I was strongly contemplating declaring myself for the NFL draft. However, after skipping the Sugar Bowl to prevent injury, my Asian mother was not happy with me at all. Chinese families don't skip out on any chances to add trophies to the cabinet. She felt that because I had been independent for so long, I forgot about what my heritage values. I had already let her down once by transferring away from Stanford to Florida, so I wasn't going to let her down again. So I decided to stay in school and return to Florida for my senior year. My mom, however, was not the only reason why I returned. Heading into the season, preseason polls have us ranked number one in the country, highlighted by our star-studded defense led by Warren Sapp's nephew, Tyreek Sapp. Practicing against this defense all of offseason only made me a better player as every player felt like they could be drafted into the NFL next year. The offense was also projected to take a leap as I am surrounded with NFL talent all over the field, with my three wide receivers and two tight ends all making strides over the offseason. Trevor Etienne, Travis Etienne's little brother, is also my starting running back, which meant that going into my fourth year I had the system down the playbook and the personnel we are once again ranked number one in the Heisman race as I looked to three P but more importantly it was time to start our road to making the college football playoff against Georgia Southern I struggled early in this one I threw a terrible pick to start the game it was tied 14 14 heading into the end of the second quarter this was not a good luck for the number one team in the nation but I break the tension in the stadium with a deep bump to my new number one bird who's learned a lot from Henderson last year being the number two and we finished the drive off with a rushing touchdown to help us take the lead but the struggles continue as I come out of half out of sorts with a fumble on the option play. Gator fans are quiet right now as they did not expect this at all. The very next drive, I throw yet another interception. This is a terrible showing for the number one team in the nation. We are getting showered by booze in the swamp. We finally cross midfield here and after a big drop by Burke, it is third and 21. We need to make a play, but I get sacked. Bad football all around by the Gators offense and we have to settle for a field goal. We are on the verge of getting upset in our first game of our senior season. I I am itching on the sidelines. I just want one more chance at the ball. But the defense comes through, they force a punt, and they get me a chance to survive this horror show with 47 seconds left in the fourth. First and 10. Everybody looks like they're dropping back, so I'm rolling out to my right. I see open field ahead. I think about going out of bounds, but we got timeouts in hand. Second play of the drives. Georgia Southern still playing the deep ball, so we're rolling out to our right again. And we're doing the same exact thing. Two plays in a row, but this time I get out of bounds. 32 seconds left. I see Georgia Southern playing QB contained. So I work outside the number to my boy Dejon Reynolds and then I come back on the same side to my boy Burr to set up a field goal with 15 seconds left. Can the kicker hit it? It's good! We survive a scare at home to start the year 1-0 and surprisingly the voters for once gave us the benefit of the doubt. We lost 4 voters but I was definitely expecting us to drop especially with how racist this committee was last year. Week 2 against North Texas and the struggles continue. In the 4th quarter we are down by 3. We should never be in this situation. Alright coach calls a read option and I pull the ball. I get a good crack block by my receiver and I'm outside and that safety wants no part in tackling me all the way touchdown Gators that play energized the crowd and gave us momentum as defense gets a stop and now we have a chance to ice the game a first down wins it coach Napier calls another read option and I pull it again spin around what a move right there and then hit the stiff arm to finish the run to end the game against North Texas are right, we survive yet another scare we start the year with two narrow wins against unranked opponents which brings us to our first away game of the year at Arkansas it is also our first SEC game and we keep struggling as I underthrow the post route up the middle for yet another interception I can feel my draft stock falling as we speak as our accuracy is now being put in question and we are holding the ball for way too long as I take a 16 yard sack third and 26 once again I throw a ball off target do not know what I was looking at there and coach opts to punt the ball not putting faith in me as I have showed him absolutely nothing for him to trust so now we are in real dangerous one Arkansas first down wins it defense brings it to third and seven Moses drops back looks deep Touchdown, Arkansas. And the Razorbacks upset the number one team in the country. Real college fans and sports better saw this upset coming as myself and the entire team have been struggling to start my senior year. This loss drops us all the way down to number seven. But I have to be better if I want to be a first round pick this year. I need to be showing better film to the NFL team. And what better way to rebound than to go back home. My first game back at Tennessee in the state where I grew up and played my high school ball. This is the first college game that my mom was going to come watch. And I wanted to perform. 
form as the last time she came to my football game we lost the high school championship game in this same exact stadium all my old friends in high school that go to Tennessee high school teachers and outside family members also traveled up to Knoxville to come see me play this to me was the biggest game of my career bigger than any bowl that I've played any championships that I've won and I wanted to have the best game of my life first drive is underway and I just start picking apart the defense giving what the defense takes me not doing anything overly aggressive mixing in a run here and there third and ten I throw the deep out right on the money but it is short of the first down it is now fourth and two and coach opts to go for it he knows how big this game is for our team we need to come out aggressive Tennessee stacking up the middle looking for the pass so I take off with my legs the DB steps up to meet me Arr, we get the first down I start yelling at the refs immediately after the play and we draw the flag I felt his glove on my forehead all right 15 yard face mask puts us on the goal line and we end the drive out with another read option touchdown hey 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 defense also came out aggressive with tackles for losses and sacks they're playing for their QB and they force a three and out which leads to first and ten we run a boot slide and I find Burke wide open for a huge game which moves us all the way down to the goal line and we get our second rushing touchdown to go up 14-0 my mom's loving it defense comes out with another big tackle right on the mark they get another stop on third and short and I take full advantage driving all the way down the field for my third rushing touchdown on the day Tennessee then scores two unanswered touchdowns which brings us to fourth and goal I don't see any receivers open in the end zone so I take off yet again and you think Tennessee would learn their lesson but no I run in for my fourth rushing touchdown of the day we are stomping all over the balls right now back at home two minutes and six 16 seconds left to ice the game. We shed off the tackle. Great blockers up the field. He can't touch me. And it's a race to the end zone. Who's faster than the Chinese man from Tennessee? 84-yard touchdown run. What a return for the Chinese man. Five rushing touchdowns away at home. My friends and family can't believe it. And that was a statement game for us right there as we show why Coach Heifel should have recruited me coming out of high school. My mom was really happy with my performance as well, but she also was kind of disappointed that I didn't throw a passing touchdown. She was on the phone saying, if you do all that running, you might as well run track. There's just nothing I can do to satisfy her. But nevertheless, that was my favorite college win of my career and was also a huge win for our season as it propels us back up to fifth right outside of the top four. After the big win, we play Kentucky, who's the sole reason that we didn't make the playoff last year. But things are different this time around as we have learned from our experience. And we destroy them 45 to 21 in front of the swamp. Just followed up with a home game against LSU. And teams have not been able to figure out this read option. We have way too many offensive weapons that need to be covered. I take it all the way for another long rushing touchdown. First and 10 on the next drive. He got hoodwinked. He got bamboozled. He got led astray. He's not making the NFL. I see one-on-one -on -one coverage. So I go deep. Moonshot 56-yard touchdown to Marcus Burke. And we blow out the Tigers at home 42-23. to But that moves us down the pole. Oh, God. I've seen this too many times, ladies and gentlemen. I can already smell it. I might need to start setting up the ALM protests a little early earlier than usual but after killing Vanderbilt away and defending the swamp against Mizzou we go down another spot I'm honestly not surprised at this point this committee's like FIFA all right there's some mass corruption going on but we have a game that could decide our college football fate right here game of the week against number six Georgia the highest ranked one loss team their defense is still one of the best in the nation and on the offensive end they have an improved Van de Grip. I'm hungry to make the playoff I deserve to be in the playoff I did not force off my NFL dreams for a year to not make the playoff and whoever loses this game was probably not gonna make the Play so we must play at a high level. I high point a ball right on the money. But Dejon Reynolds could not come down with it, which leads us to a fourth down. Coach wants to kick the field goal, but I beg coach to go for this. I love the look that the Georgia defense was showing. I felt like I could exploit the seams. And what do you know? ETN right up the seam. Diving catch for the touchdown. I repay Coach Napier's trust. Defense then forces a punt. We are looking like a team hungry to make the playoff. We look like we want it more, all right, as coach calls a screen pass. Great blocks down the field. Trevor ETN. Etienne in for his second touchdown of the day. 17-10 here in the third quarter. Georgia's been setting a spy all game. But it doesn't matter as he gets his ankles wrong. His ankle snatch. Which leads us two yards away from the end zone. And Georgia's defense does a nice job of stopping us. Preventing us from getting a first down or a touchdown. Fourth and one. We did not come all the way down to kick field goals. We snapped the ball. I'm buying time for my receivers. And then I high point it to Reynolds. A clutch high point ball there. That'll be some great film for the NFL scouts. And speaking of great film, why not flash the running ability one more time all the way 
Touchdown, Gators! We run the Bulldogs out of Jacksonville. Chomp, chomp, chomp! As we win 31 to 10, dominating Georgia for the second year in a row. And we move up to number five in the nation, right outside of the top four once again. And looking at the rankings, there are four undefeated teams that stand in our way. Three of them play a ranked opponent this week. So we must handle Appalachian State. This could be our chance to get back into the top four. First and ten, we run our signature read option. Great job by the running back, blowing out his blocker. Wide receivers giving me great blocks too. And I go all the way for yet another rushing touchdown. Third and 12 late in the first again. And what do you know? I'm taking off over the Florida logo. I go 29-yard run. Which we cap up with our second rushing touchdown. Another one. And if teams are not going to guard the run, we're going to keep running on them. As we end up running for 259 yards on the ground. And five rushing touchdowns. Seven touchdowns total. Blowing out Appalachian State 49-24. to And we are now fourth in the nation. Ohio State and Georgia Tech both drop games. Two lost Clemson leaves over us, but we are now in a playoff spot. And so all we need to do is retain this position as we are up against South Carolina. Middle of the third quarter, you know what's coming. Another read option pull. This Florida rush offense is dangerous. As we defend the swamp against the Gamecocks. Gator fans can't contain their excitement as they can smell the playoff right around the corner. We also remain as the number one Heisman candidate. And with all the rushing touchdowns, fans are starting to compare me to Tim Tebow. Now we head into a two-week buy, which is a scary time to have two buys in a row. Because you never know what these voters will do. They will find any reason to discredit the one Chinese QB in college. But after a nice two-week break, we move up to number two! Michigan is now the number one team, followed by Oregon at three and Georgia Tech back at four. As we head into our final game of the year at Florida State. This top four has been shuffling all year around, so we cannot afford to slip up. 14-7 here in the second quarter. I throw a nice cross-body throw all the way to Dejon Reynolds, who spins off the first defender and trucks the second defender for a nice game. Later on in the drive, I'm rolling back out to my right, throwing back out to my left. To our fifth receiver, Aaron Gray, for the touchdown. We attack over the air and run up the scoreboard against Florida State, which concludes our final regular season game in our college career. Your 11-1 and Gators are currently number two in the polls, as it is now Ohio State, Florida, UNC, and Penn State in the running, with Michigan dropping out. So now it is our final game that can change the ranking. SEC championship game. We play a rematch against Texas A&M. A win gets us both another SEC championship and a college football playoff berth. A&M starts out ultra aggressive going for it on fourth and three. Quarterback drops back. He's throwing. He's looking deep. We have two guys over there for the PBU for turnover on down. And the back-to-back -back Heisman winner, the only Chinese QB in college football, comes out razor sharp. Three passes is all it takes to get us on first and goal. And we run in for the touchdown to open the SEC championship game. And I'm back on offense, third and two. And Tyreek Sapp gets there to force the ball out for a fumble. Wilson recovers. We follow up with one completion. Make that two completions. Make that three completions into the end zone. We're a 14-0 lead in the championship game. Number one defense in the nation back on the field, laying the hammer on third down. They want to lock in that playoff spot. They hold a to just three points. Second and 10, I take off looking for more points before halftime. But I get rocked on this hit and I lose the ball. Our first mistake of the game ends up costing us a field goal to make it a one possession game going into the second half. As teams have been watching film, focusing on the run, I had to start threading passes in between tight windows. That is exactly what I do on this drive as I fake the screen pass and I hit the street, which ends the drive with a passing touchdown to my tight end as we head into the fourth up 21 to 6. On second and four here, I'm rolling to my right. I see my tight end has a step, so I throw it up right on the money for 47 yards, which ends off with a field goal to put us up three possessions. But it is our defense that steals the show, holding a and to only six points as they force another turnover on down. This is exactly what I transferred to Florida for, to win big games, play with NFL talent and make the college football playoff as we dominate the SEC championship game 38 to 6 back to back SEC champions and that wasn't it for hardware as we dominate the Heisman vote back to back to back Heismans for the Chinese QB we got 756 first place votes leading a list of five QBs and we once again win the triple crown with the Maxwell the Walter Camp and the O'Brien right tackle
tackle wins the outland as the best all lineman. We also had the two best pass rushers in the nation in Boone and McClellan. The best linebacker in Shamar James. And we had three runner-ups for the Thorpe Award. And four of the top six finalists all from Florida. But now is the big moment. The college football playoff reveal. And the results have been announced. The number one team in the nation is the Florida Gators. Followed by UNC, Ohio State, and Penn State. We have finally made the college football playoff. It took us four years. But we did not make it just to make it. We came here for one goal. And that is to win the national championship for my mom. And the road to the national championship game will start against Penn State. We are ready to enter the college football playoff to see if a Chinese quarterback can win the national championship. And our road to the natty starts with the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl against Penn State in Atlanta, Georgia. Penn State has the number one defense in the league, allowing the least total offensive yards and passing yards. So after our last practice, we head out to Atlanta, Georgia. Mercedes-Benz Stadium packed with Gator fans. As they have traveled up for a chance to see their team clinch a berth into the national championship. First play, Christian Bayou hits his boy Wallace for a nice little three yard game. Penn State instantly starts running. Hurry up. Interesting approach to start the game as they pick up a first down. This definitely caught our defense off guard, but we get a tackle for loss to stop the nonsense. And they start out with a field goal to go up 3-0. So here we go. Our first snap in the college football playoff. It's a fake screen wheel. I hit a pump fake and I'm rolling out to my right and I look deep for a big play. Dejon Reynolds 47 yard reception. What a start for the Florida Gators. First and 10 play action. I'm rolling to my left. I see Graham on the comeback now. Oh my god, what a catch. Highlight play after highlight play brings us on second and goal. I'm rolling to my right and Penn State has clearly not done their homework. Touchdown! Fantastic game script by Coach Napier combined with excellent execution has us on a blazing start. Next drive. Bayou drops back taking a deep shot. Ball is in the air. Interception! What a sequence for the Gators! Now we are back in the red zone hungry for more. I split a ball in between the linebackers for our second touchdown of the quarter. Lee Black with a nice grab. What a start for the Florida Gators. 14-3 to start the second quarter. Can the defense get a third consecutive stop? Bayou throws a deep ball to Wallace. Bust in coverage. 71-yard touchdown. What a response by the Nittany Lions. So we must respond to bring the noise back in the stadium. Third and 11 here. I'm looking for my number one, Marcus Burke. He makes the reception, but he's short of the first down. And coach opts to go for it because he's aggressive. Fourth and one. Curl's concept is the play call, and I hit my tight end. Perfect ball placement right underneath the linebacker's arm and the drive continues. Next ensuing play, play action. Once again, the tight ends are left open over the middle, but my tight end fumbles it. We turn the ball over there. Crucial mistake by our tight end. But I'm thinking it's okay because the fumble was deep in Penn State zone. And I'm starting to think maybe we get the ball back on a safety or something as Walden almost forces a fumble. Second and 11, Bayou looks deep again. And look who it is, Wallace once again. Same side on the same corner, 97 yards, house call. Penn State have taken the lead here in Atlanta. What a turnaround here in the first half. But don't think we're not looking to respond with a score of our own as I roll out to my right. I break out loose for the first time in the game. Air half is taken off. I want the national championship as we cap off the drive. To our right side to Graham. A nice response by the Gators offense. Me and V, you are going toe to toe right now with this offensive production as they finish off the half for a field goal to bring the game 21-20 into halftime. First drive of the second half. This could be our last half we ever play in college football. Goal line giving me great protection and I find Finley Graham. Once again, he's having a great game so far. And that pass right there breaks a Florida record for the most passing yards in a season. Breaking my own record set last year during my junior year. Next play after breaking a record. Penn State and man coverage. Come on now. No spy as well. Are you kidding me? Touchdown Gators. And not only is that a touchdown, that is back-to-back -back records broken on back-to-back -back plays. The most rushing touchdowns in a season by a Gator breaking Tim Tebow's record. What a drive. What a player. What a game. Penn State offense comes out of half with a different approach. Attacking on the ground, dominating the line of scrimmage with five straight runs. Defense is getting out muscled on the line of scrimmage as Bayou dives the ball up the middle to Clifford for the touchdown. And after converting the two point conversion, we are back on offense and I'm taking off. Up the right sideline, big gain, and I kick the linebacker in the head. Kung Fu style, all right? My shin's gonna be sore tomorrow. Third and goal. I have plenty of options here. I look them off though as I scramble out and I have the check down. But I get hit once again and we must settle for a field goal to take back the lead. But our defense is struggling right now. We are losing up front. We cannot do 
anything to control this Penn State run offense as they rush all the way down the field to take back the lead. I have not seen our defense look this bad all year as this is setting up for a all-time shootout heading into the fourth quarter. Third and goal. I'm looking for the corner route here in... No. No, 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 no. I don't know. Do not tell me I just got intercepted by a white DB, ladies and gentlemen. My draft stock just plummeted. That is easily the most embarrassing play of my career. Penn State has a chance right now to add to their lead. But a big tackle by Shamar James on third and 12 gets us the ball back. What a stop by the defense there. Second and six play action. Penn State only rushing four. I know I have time, so I'm rolling out to my right. I have my tight end open down the sideline, and I hit him for a Huge gate to set up the handoff to ETN. And the Gators have regained the lead. What a semifinal this has been. Can the defense muster up another stop to clinch a berth into the national championship? Third and six, biggest play of the game. The U hot routes the outside. He snaps the ball. Drop back. Looking deep down the right sideline. And look who it is again. Wallace, who's been torching our secondary all game. Another big play, which is capped off with a VU rushing touchdown to put Penn State back in the lead. So with 4.07 remaining in the game. It is up to us to win this game. All right, hand off to ETN. Shut down. Failed read option on second and eight brings us to third down. Need to move the ball. Advance the chains to get a touchdown right here. I hit the corner route to my tight end. And the ball bounces off his helmet. What is he doing? What is he looking at right there? He didn't turn around. And so we have to punt down by four with 3.22 left in the fourth. So now we need a stop to get us the ball back. I am praying on the sideline for another chance. Penn State hands the ball off to Wallace, trying to chew some clock, but our defense comes through. Tackle for loss brings us to third and 13. They run a quarterback run, but the defense is having none of that, and we get the ball back with one minute and 38 seconds. First throw of the drive. Oh my god, that was almost an interception. We get lucky there. Second play, I'm generating time. I don't see anybody, so I take off once again. Going out of bounds is not in my name as I trust the DB. And we need to move fast. First and 10. Coach calls a shot play, so I take the shot. Deep ball. Graham! Oh! He drops it! Second and ten. I find the wide open receiver, Reynolds, but he drops it! The nerves are coming into play here as we move to third down. Biggest play of the game. I'm rolling out to my right, and I find Graham! To keep the drive alive. Next play. QB power. Coach Napier wants it in the hands of the Chinese man. I rumble up the middle for a 13-yard gain. Timeout. 49 seconds left. Graham in motion. Another play. Ashen pass. Rolling right. I see an open man. Touchdown! Gator! The same tight end who had the ball bounce off his helmet early in the game. Huge extra point puts us up by three in the semifinal. So now it comes down to our defense. One stop for the win. First play, Veyu drops back. Finds Clifford wide open up the sideline. Penn State calls a timeout. Second play of the drive. Same play again. What are we doing? Two plays is all it takes. First and ten. Veyu checks it down. Singleton makes the catch, but he's met with a boom. What a hit right there. Keeps him in bounds as well. Now Penn State have to hurry up. They get on line to spike the ball to make it third and 11. We cannot give up a touchdown, boys. I gotta bring the natty home to my mom. you drops back incomplete. So it comes down to this kick right here. A block or a miss will send us to the national championship. Ball is snapped. Hold is good. Kick is up. Ben, it's good. 45-45 in the semifinal, and we are headed to overtime. Penn State chooses the coin toss, and they lose the toss. As both teams have a chance at the ball, I elect for defense to go out first, as they are hot from containing Penn State to three points on the previous drive. So ball on the 25 overtime, and off the Singleton. Fumble! Singleton fumble! The D-line comes up with it! All we gotta do is make the field go easier for our kicker now, and we have a spot in the national championship. I break another one of my records there most passing yards in a game by a Florida QB, which sets up the chippy to win the game. Bang! The Gators are back. The Gators are back. They are back in the national championship game. The number one team in the nation came up clutch at the end. Defense forced the fumble. And we have officially won the Peach Bowl 48-45 in an OT stunner against Penn State. What a nerve-wracking game right there, but we have made it to the championship game. And we will face UNC as they defeat Ohio State with the same score 48-45. He faced the best QB we have seen this year, senior Drake
Drake May. And on the defensive side, we must worry about the highest ranked D tackle in the nation, Junior Travis Shaw. But here we go. Raymond James Stadium in Tampa Bay, Florida. It is essentially a home game. It is my final college football game. I have been dreaming about winning the national championship ever since I started watching football. And my dreams might come true tonight. I could put Chinese football on the map. First play of the game. I spin out to my left, buying time from a receiver. And my tight end, Big E, creates enough separation for a 37-yard game. Third and five here. UNC sends the blitz. But I'm ready for it. I'm experienced. Four years of college football has prepared me for reads like that as I start 3-4-3. Three, three. Put up six points on the board to start the national championship off. Meanwhile, on the other hand, Drake May cannot handle the blitz. And we get the ball back deep in Tar Heel zone. And off to ETN. Fantastic blocking up the middle. Right into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. An absolute dream start here in Tampa Bay as the defense continues to harass Drake May. I could tell the defense was pissed coming off the last game as they come out firing. Big hits, big plays. They are swarming all over the ball. And you know the offense wasn't going to let them down. Third and ten. I'm patient. Trickling back, buying time. Touchdown. Three touchdowns in the first quarter and we break another record for most passing touchdowns in a season by a Gator previously held by Kyle Trask. But Drake May finally starts to pick up some rhythm as he puts together a nice drive and he cashes in four seven points there to start the second quarter. First and ten. Tar Heel send a corner blitz but that does not phase me. Went up the middle to Nevac for a 20 yard game. This time I'm rolling out to my right and a bust in coverage. What are the Tar Heels doing here? Wide open to Burke. Touchdown. What an offensive display by the Chinese man on the biggest stage. 62 yards. This is getting ugly early as defense mauls me. And the machine just keeps rolling. This offense cannot be stopped by any team in the nation. Fifth touchdown of the half with five minutes remaining in the quarter. And we have broken a college football record. For most passing touchdowns in their entire collegiate career. A record previously held by Case Keenum. However, after a UNC touchdown, a miss on a Wide open routine ball and a UNC field goal. We needed to stay on our toes, all right? I see that my boy Burke is red hot. He is on fire, so I throw it with zero hesitation. And what do you know? Of course, the ball is right on the mark. We end the drive up with another read option to make it six touchdowns in one half. 42 to 20 is the score at halftime. And what a time it was for me to play my best football in a half. 273 quarterback rating, 347 yards, and four touchdowns with zero picks. Burke Burke also has 146 yards and three touchdowns. And the defense has six sacks. McClellan with three at halftime. But can we sustain this lead as we head into the last half of football in our college career? UNC starts out the second half with a long drive that almost takes up an entire quarter. And they cash in for a touchdown, which all of a sudden makes it a two possession game. Momentum is starting to shift a little bit in the stadium as I look for Burke, assuming he would be open. But the safety baits me and comes up with an interception. Our first mistake of the game and all of a sudden the game looks close. UNC is starting to move the ball on us as they have regained life. Third and four. Need a stop here by the defense here. Drake May looks up the middle. Diving catch by Chapman. Touchdown UNC. We were up by 27 at one point in this game but now it is a one possession game. First and ten. Receivers not generating separation. So I'ma do it myself like every Chinese man in that group project. Running up the middle over the logo. Scoop! The change of direction is deadly. What a big game. Big play there for the Gators. Third and four. We need to continue moving the chains. I leave the pocket a little too early and I tried to do too much. We have yet to score a point in the second half. This is a complete opposite display of what we showed in the first. And Drake May has a chance to tie. He looks deep. All in the air but it's broken up by Green. Third and ten. Biggest play of the game. We send a blitz and we get home. Drake May gets sacked for negative eight yards. Perfect response by our defense. So now we just need a couple of first downs to wash the clock down and we will become now no champions. I am wasting as much time as possible. I take off and I slide for the first time in my life. This is how you know I want the natty, all right? I don't think I've slid since my baseball days in China. First and ten. ETN rushing up to the right. Gains a yard and UNC uses their second timeout. Second and nine. Another handoff to ETN. Mauled by the D-line. That forces UNC to use their last remaining timeout. Third and eight. A first down ices the game. And we will be crowned national champions. ETN tackle for loss. 51 makes a great play on the ball and UNC is still alive. A terrible display in the second half by the offense. I have no idea why he punted the ball so fast. I literally can't control this. That long snapper is definitely not coming to the league with me. Alright, he's getting left behind. But with 121 left in the fourth, Drake May has a chance. Can the defense come up with one last stop? First throw incomplete. Second down. May checks it down to Petaway. 
Tackle. Inbound. The clock is running. North Carolina is hurrying up to the line. Third and seven. Drake May goes back to Petaway the other way. And he somehow gets the first down. UNC is in a rush. They are still going. Hurry up. And because they are in a rush, they get called for a false start. Miscommunication on the line. First and 15. Can the defense come up with one last stop? First throw is incomplete. Second throw out of bounds for one yard. Third and 14. The national championship is getting closer. Oh, that should have been a big. But it is fourth and 14. Crap. Out on its feet. I can smell the national championship trophy right around the corner. North Carolina sets up an empty. They need a first. May looks left. Has the guy wide open. Chapman. Touchdown UNC. What just happened? The entire stadium is silent as UNC has tied the game in the most improbable way. Extra point is good and we are not at 42. 15 seconds left. We still have three timeouts. First down. We get an easy one on the slant to Burke. Instant timeout. I've been called all half, but one thing you never do is dealt a Chinese man under pressure. All the high expectations my parents have set for me. All that pressure was gonna come through in this moment. 11 seconds left. I look up the seat and I have my tight end for a 25 yard gain. Another quick timeout with an offense that's been cold all half. We suddenly have a chance to get into field goal range. Coach Napier wants a Hail Mary, but I'm changing the call. I audible and I toss it once again to my tight end, Big E, who's been coming up big in the fourth quarter, and that puts us in field goal range. I think, I'm not too sure. It, there, there's a chance. And what could possibly be my last ever pass in college football? Turned out to break another NCAA record for most passing yards in a season. But here we go. The biggest moment of my life. All my hard work. My dedication, my sacrifices all come down to this kick. 56 yard field goal for the win. Snap is up, hold is good, kick is good! What an ending to the national championship game. Struggling all half and I managed to find rhythm with just 11 seconds. Moving all the way down the field for a field goal. And what an end to my college career. After being doubted my entire football life, your Florida Gators our national champions! My childhood dream has finally come true. The nation can finally realize that the best quarterback across the country is a Chinese man. I finally brought the national championship home to my mom. I haven't seen her smile like this in my life. She is so proud of her son and finally starts to see the vision that I had all along, which is becoming a national champion and an NFL level QB. And my road to glory has come to a close. A perfect ending to an illustrious college career and I've officially put Chinese football players on the map. But now it is time to inspire more Chinese kids across the world by taking my talents to the NFL and becoming a full-time football player. My mom is still unsure about this career path, but hopefully the money does the talking and the convincing, and we have officially put pen on paper and declared for the NFL draft. We will find out next time which team will take their chances on a Chinese quarterback. After winning the national championship with the Florida Gators, I officially declared for the NFL draft. I am ready to become the first Chinese QB drafted into the NFL with hopes of inspiring more Asian kids around the world to do the same. Following the big year was Chinese New Year, the biggest holiday for my family. At the dinner table, we had dumplings. We had the duck, the steamed fish, the rice, the moon cake. It was a great time at the dinner table, but that was when I told everyone in my family that I would be headed to the draft. And I was met with some mixed responses. A lot of my family don't even know what a football is. So when I explained how the game worked and how I could make millions from it, they thought it was a phone scam. Other members like my father understood my decision as he even offered to train me for the process. Despite the fact that he's missing an entire lower half of a leg. But anyways, even after winning three Heismans in a row and a national championship, GMs across the league still had doubts about my game. I faced an uphill battle because of my size. There weren't a lot of six foot quarterbacks who ran the way I ran and played QB the way I did. Mel Kuyper's draft report came out and reported that I lacked accuracy and anticipation. Said I had a big head and small eyes. Never knew that was an issue in the NFL, but there were plenty of scouts and GMs across the league who definitely had a much different perspective of my game compared to college football fans. So I knew I needed to work my ass off in the offseason. I trained tirelessly for the workouts that I knew I was going to get from teams, but I also had big decisions that I needed to make off the field. First order of business was to get myself an agent. We needed someone who could find endorsement deals and reach out to teams for more opportunities. So I ended up hiring an up and coming agent right here, my girl Janelle. I met her while I was at Florida finishing my semester and I will do all her math homework because I'm a sim. But one thing Janelle was really good at was bargaining. 
Her mouth could do wonders. She could talk herself out of any situation at school. And I had a lot of faith in her. So while I was training relentlessly on the field, improving my game, Chanel was on the move off the field and ended up bringing me the opportunity of a lifetime. I was approached by Nike to become one of the faces of Nike football. I could not believe it. I was going to be the face of Nike in China and be next to guys like LeBron James, Michael Jordan, and Cristiano Ronaldo. Not only did the Nike endorsement come with a signature shoe but I also got invited to a Nike showcase event where I got a chance to work out with some of the NFL's best players this was a huge opportunity for me to show scouts my improvements that I've made over the offseason as I was thrown to Nike athletes like OBJ Travis Kelsey Michael Thomas which I just could not believe repping with NFL receivers instantly made me realize that the NFL game was much different as these guys are moving at a completely different pace than what it was like in college they cut different they anticipate different they have different views of football so before the combine came around, I knew I needed to improve even more. And the first major change that I needed to make was my diet. And speaking of diets, today's sponsor is HelloFresh. It's the beginning of the new year, and everyone is trying to save money and eat well at the same time. And if you're trying to stop ordering expensive takeout and delivery, HelloFresh is just for you. One of the things that I love about HelloFresh is just the fact that it is extremely affordable and that I can get groceries delivered right to my door. As a YouTuber and a student, I don't really have much time to grocery shop. And the fact that I know that I'm getting healthy and fresh food delivered to me is extremely convenient. All right, so we got the Greek inspired chicken and couscous salad, caramelized barbecue chicken, and the pan fried salmon and bok choy. Oh no, this is the one. This is my bread and butter right here. This is my favorite recipe from HelloFresh. What's also convenient is the fact that HelloFresh is very flexible with your meal preferences. You can customize your recipes, change your meal preferences, and adjust your plan size, all with just a few clicks on the app or the website. The meal prep is extremely simple, as all you have to do is follow the recipe step Step by step, which results in tasty meals like this. Mmm, that's delicious. If you want to give HelloFresh a try, go to HelloFresh.com and use code HEFE21 for 21 free meals and free shipping. That's HEFE21 for 21 free meals and free shipping. Shout out to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back into the video. So now we head into the scouting combine and I decide to skip all the workouts. The reason was because I really thought that all of my film from college did the talking and it's totally not because EA doesn't have the scouting combine built into the game. What I did do down in Indianapolis was interview for a bunch of teams. I wanted to leave a lasting impression on teams and show them that I'm the right choice for their vacant QB position. Specifically, seven teams showed me interest. The Tennessee Titans, the Miami Dolphins, the New England Patriots, the Detroit Lions, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Seattle Seahawks, and the New York Jets. As I am breaking new grounds as the first Chinese QB to enter the draft, I felt like I was being asked a different set of questions for my interview. The Lions and Steelers really went in depth with questions regarding my background, asking me about Chinese culture, the history, and whether I could handle the pressure of being a trailblazer for Chinese Chinese players in the NFL. I also got questions about specific defensive coverages and protection assignment from the Titans and the Dolphins. The Seahawks asked me really weird questions that had no specific answer. Questions like, would you rather be a tiger or a bull? Or what would I do if I wasn't playing football? Like, isn't that kind of obvious? It's a doctor or lawyer. And then there were shameless teams like the Texans, which just straight up asked me to do their bookkeeping for their taxes. That was not an interview, okay? That was straight up a math exam. But the one team that showed me the most interest was the New York Jets, as they are looking for their first Q since Mark Sanchez. They wanted me to work out for them privately and talked about drafting me with the second pick in the draft. But here's the thing. I don't want to play for the Jets. This is a QB graveyard, all right? This place is cursed for quarterbacks. And even though heading to New York is tempting, I had zero desire to play for the Jets. My mom also did not want to go to New York. She said, it's too cold, son. It's too cold. You know I can't be disobedient to my mom, so I had to do what I had to do. I completely bombed the workout, all right? I made mistakes left and right. Took as many sacks as I could. I had only one completion all workout. I haven't played like this since my freshman year at Stanford, all right? I tried my hardest. To not end up on the New York Jets. But after the workout, I was brought in for one last private interview with the Jets. These guys just don't get the message that I'm trying to send. They pretty much kept gobbling my wee wee, all right? They're saying things like, You're the most well rounded player in the draft. We love the fact that you can play under pressure and you can bring a completely new market to the Jets and increase Chinese tourism in New Jersey. So I have to be straightforward, all right? I said, Look, I'm not playing for this bum franchise. This place stinks, all right? I'm not playing on this weak ass MetLife turf. I'm not gonna let y'all ruin my career. My disinterest in the Jets was leaked to the public two days prior to the draft as I was 
being bombarded by questions from the media and getting toasted on social media. This was Eli Manning getting drafted by the Chargers all over again, and it only added additional stress towards drafting. But the day was finally here. A day that I have been waiting and working my whole life towards. I am projected to be a first round QB, so we shall see what happens here. But before we hit the draft, let me hit my dance. But here we go. The Jaguars are on the clock. They are making the first pick. And they select Trevor Lawrence. I kind of saw that one coming, so I wasn't too disappointed. It would have been nice to go number one, but it is what it is. It also would have been nice to stay in Florida, but you know what? We can only control what we can control, all right? But second pick of the draft belongs to the New York Jets. They are on the clock. This is peak live television drama, ladies and gentlemen. What will happen here? Well, the Jets take me as their franchise QB, regardless of my unwillingness to play. Or will they go a different direction? The clock has started started ticking down and 10 minutes felt like 10 years in that green room my heart was pounding ass crack was sweaty i didn't know what would happen but all of a sudden my phone rings no i pick up the phone and i couldn't believe what i was hearing i am officially the second overall pick of the nfl draft i'm showing excitement as i am happy about all the hard work i have put in for this moment but don't let that fool you ladies and gentlemen deep down inside i know my career is ruined i know i'm finished coach robert sala starts congratulating me but then he hands the phone to gm joe douglas and all of a sudden Things change. Big boy Joe tells me they are currently working on a trade with another team. He doesn't know the details yet, but teams are interested in moving their picks for me. So as I am walking up to the draft stage, there is a bidding war going on as the team that offers the biggest haul will acquire the Chinese QB via trade. But I walk the stage and I get my Jets jersey, kind of mixed with emotions because I'm excited that I got drafted, but I truly have no idea where I am actually going to be headed to. After taking a picture with the commissioner I have finally done it I have become the first Chinese QB to make it into the NFL from Clarksville Stanford Florida Heisman national championship now i am also a lottery pick i am paving the way for other chinese players in the future and showing kids around the world that anything is possible <laughs> but all of a sudden a trade has been finalized the new york jets have officially traded the chinese QB too the Miami Dolphins! The Finns gave up their seventh overall pick and the next two years of first round picks for the Chinese man. I am staying in Florida, ladies and gentlemen. I am staying in Florida. The Finns have had QB troubles as Tua has brain damage and Teddy Bridgewater has consistently been hurt as well. So they bring me in to try to fill that void and I get to throw the football to Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle and work with an offensive head coach and Mike McDaniel. What a beautiful scenario for me as I get that stay in Florida and my journey has just begun in the next video a Chinese QB will start his NFL journey with the Dolphins will I secure a starting job in preseason and take this team to the promised land can I win rookie of the year and can I make the playoffs in my first year as a quarterback in the NFL after getting drafted by the Jets and getting dealt on one of the biggest trades in draft history to the Dolphins the Chinese man was ready to get started in training camp and battle it out for the starting job although the journey just began we were already generating tons of buzz across the world. As no one could believe that a pair of Chinese parents would send their kids to play football instead of ping pong or badminton. More importantly, they could not believe that they let their kid transfer away from Stanford Engineering. I had to be the next coming of Tom Brady to do that. But I was thrilled to be a part of such a prestigious organization and was determined to do everything in my power to earn the starting quarterback job. I spent countless hours studying McDaniels' playbook, developing chemistry with my receivers, backs, and o -line. I was always the first one to arrive at practice and I last one to leave as I wanted to set the tone as the franchise QB and show that hard-working Asian mentality that my parents have instilled in but me. Despite my hard work, I was facing tough competition for the starting Tua job. Tua was a star QB at Alabama who already had some great seasons buckled in the NFL. The only concern with Tua is that he has half his brain which left, which is a huge reason why Miami brought me here in the first place. Teddy Bridgewater has also been a proven starter in the NFL and an extremely reliable backup quarterback. So I had to impress and convince the coaching staff throughout training camp that I deserve to be the starter 
week but one. Most importantly, I had to make the most out of my preseason start. Our first preseason game was against the Bucks. And Coach McDaniel has me only playing the first quarter as he wants to give fair opportunities to all three QBs. The Buccaneers start the game out with a field goal, and here we my go. My first pass in the NFL is an out route to Tyreek Hill. Very questionable ball, but we go act like we meant to do Definitely it. Definitely some nerves going on right now as we take a terrible sack to Shaq Barrett. But we come back hitting the wide open hook route. To my other speedster, Jalen Waddle, to move the chains. Todd Bowles is dumbfounded. We got 45 seconds left, so Coach calls a shot play here, and I find Gesicki wide open over the middle for a huge game. Which leads to my last play of the quarter. Can we cap off our first career drive with a touchdown? I throw the corner fade. The catch is made. Can he get his feet in? No. Fantastic ball placement by us, though, but just inches off from a touchdown. I go four for five, 73 yards on my first career preseason game. Coach McDaniel likes what he sees. As we move into our second preseason game against the Raiders, OC tells me that he thinks my only competition is Tua now as Teddy has fallen out of favor. So we are gonna both get a half each against the Raiders as I make my home debut. Hard Rock Stadium fans in the building are very familiar with my game as they saw me grow into one of the best collegiate quarterbacks at Florida. But the pressure is on now. Can I win that starting job for week that one. That is all that is on my mind and I start the game with the ball right by the linebacker's ear hitting my main man Tyreek Hill for a 17 yard Big game. Big third down here to keep the drive alive. I'm looking for the in route. But I throw a brutal interception to Jonathan Abram. That has to be up there with me throwing that pick to that white DB. If you're throwing picks to Abram you should be filing for employment somewhere else. I thought I genuinely was going to quit football once he caught that ball but I go up and make a linebacker like that. I'm back in football baby. Matter of fact coach let me play both sides of the ball. We are back for our second drive, and for this second drive, I will not be having a scoreboard. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. Not only are you watching the first ever Chinese QB in the NFL, but also the first quarterback to play without knowing the score, the clock, or the down and distance. So I had to improvise, finally showing my rushing ability with back-to-back -back rushes. The Raiders don't want to tackle me. So now we head into the second quarter, I, I think, and we are looking for our first career NFL touchdown. Coach calls literally the same exact play called the Seahawks do their pick on. But instead of throwing it, we pick it up with our legs. First career touchdown for the Chinese. Man. And let me hit my dance. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, hey. There's a nice angle right here. Boom! Elite camera work. Third drive, and I still don't know clock and score. This game is just so amazing, all right? But play, action, pass, nice route concept by McDaniel, and I hit the wide open Gesicki to bring the ball in the red zone, which brings us to the goal line, rolling out to my right here. Buying time for my receivers, and I find a wide open Sed Wilson for our second touchdown of the half. Yeah. Our half of football ends right there. Other than the interception, it was a great performance, especially with no ability to see clock down or distance at all. But now it is our last preseason game against the Eagles, and coach tells me that I get the full game. A big game and a win will most likely seal the starting job for us. Can we become the shot caller for the Miami Dolphins to start the season? First play of the game, I drop back here, and I make a ridiculous crossbody throw. No idea why I did that. There was absolutely zero pressure. But we'll take it, all right? Second play, I see the safety shift, which means one-on-one -on -one for Tyreek Hill. And ain't no way anyone is running with him. What a start to this game. As we end the drive off with a handoff to Chase Edmonds to go up 7-0. Late in the third, McDaniel wants play action. I see my guy Gesicki up the sideline. He makes the grab, shakes off the tackle all the way. Touchdown, Dolphins. And Coach has seen enough. He pulled me out after that drive. Which means one thing and one thing only. We have won the starting job heading into week one of the NFL season. The Chinese man is officially one of the 32 best quarterbacks in the entire world. I cannot believe it, all right? I was so happy. I had to call my mom to break the news, all right? I was just so excited to let her know. I was like, Mom, I'm a starter. I worked all offseason for this. Son, what is a starter? So I started explaining what a starting quarterback is is because she doesn't watch football. Oh, I thought you started last year too. No, mom, that, that was at Florida. Yeah, but you you still in Florida, no, Miami? Yeah, but I got drafted to the Dolphins, mom. What what is draft? My mom thinks I'm still in college, all right? That's how badly she wants me to stay in school. I actually really wanted to visit her with my bye week, but I needed to prepare extra hard because my official NFL debut was right around the corner. You know, if it was the Lions or the Bears, then I probably would have flown home to Clarksville for the bye. But we are playing Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots. Belichick is notorious for suffocating rookie quarterbacks, and I was not trying to be added to that list. So I stayed in Miami and practiced hard. 
watched film doing whatever it takes to get this win. I did not want anyone to think that I made it to this point by accident. I wanted to show people that Chinese players belong in the NFL. So with what felt like an entire nation on my back, we were ready to start our official NFL debut at home at the Hard Rock Stadium. I have never been this nervous for a football game in my life, and I've played some pretty big ones. I finally kicked down the doors into the NFL, and running out of that tunnel to represent the Dolphins sent chills down my spine. But after two straight runs on first and second down, I make a terrible decision on third down. I could have easily picked that up with my legs. The nerves are definitely playing a factor right now. Hashtag Chinese players don't belong is trending on Twitter as we speak. The Patriots get a field goal, but I get my first first down of my career on a nice whip route by said Wilson. Third and ten here. That safety takes three steps in. Which means it's gotta be one-on-one for Tyreek. I gotta take the shot. Fred Baskin, make way for the Chinese man, cause he's here to take over the NFL. All the way down to the red zone. I'm rolling to my right. Looking for options. I don't see anyone open, so I'm gonna do it myself with my legs. Touchdown, Dolphins. Miami is absolutely electric right now as defense gets a quick stop. Which gives us 13 seconds to leave the first half with even third more. and 11. I have to take an end zone shot here. I see Kasiki running the corner round. And he comes down with it. Sticky Kasiki with the win on the jump ball. What a first half here in Miami as I am dicing Belichick's defense. We end off with yet another touchdown here in the second half. And we take down the Patriots 28-7. In our NFL debut, I get the game ball from Coach McDaniel as I throw for 311 and three touchdowns with 47 yards and a touchdown over the ground. And we start off the season 1 and 0 on our way up to Baltimore. I am about to play one of my football role models, Lamar Jackson, head to head. Late in the second half, down by 14. I've been struggling in the first half, going 6 for 9 for 69. But with less than 40 seconds left, we gotta do what Lamar does best. All I see is green grass ahead. Great block there by Waddle. And we get a big gain with the legs right before half. But can we make it six before halftime? High point ball up the seam. Sticky Gasicki. That is disgusting. Touchdown Dolphins. That ball was right on the money. Perfect high point ball. And it is a seven point game here in the third quarter. I'm on the run. I try to make a play out of nothing. And we throw a terrible pick to Kyle Hamilton. Baltimore ends up converting a field goal and now we are down 10. I'm running my first NFL two minute drill trying to come back in this Game. First and ten here, I hit Gasicki in the flat, He's slowly becoming one of my favorite targets, and he draws a face mask call. That is huge. That call puts us on the seventh, and we find a touchdown to Tyreek Hill to make it a three-point game with less than two minutes left. But then J.K. Dobbins takes it 75 yards, and that's game. We drop game two against the Ravens, and I look like a true rookie in this one. We go 0-1 in our career against Lamar, but plenty to learn from this game, and hopefully we'll become AFC rivals years down the line. The games don't get any easier, though, as now we play division rivals. Rivals Buffalo matching up head to head against Josh Allen. Uh, I was not gonna just back down from the challenge. That is not what Chinese people do. We gonna find a way to make a play. Look at that separation created by Tyreek. I throw the lob instantly and look at the yeah. Stop playing one on one with that boy. Touchdown. Dolphins. Next drive, I'm dropping it back in. Von Miller strikes. Sack fumble for a touchdown. My right tackle needs to learn Chinese. But we managed to get the Bills back with a beautiful ball to my favorite red zone target, Mr. Sticky himself. And it is a two-point game here late in the fourth. Third and 12th, biggest play of the game. Probably the biggest play of my career. I look for the deep end, but it is batted down, and we must settle for a field goal. And I had a weird feeling that one minute, 28 seconds was just too much time for Josh Allen. That feeling was correct as he drives all the way down in just 48 seconds for a touchdown. So now we gotta flash the deep ball, throw a couple of prayers down the field, and hope for a miracle. First throw, I'm looking for my boy Tyreek Hill once again. He looks like he kind of has a step. Whoa! Hey! The ball got picked off, but hey, that guy, that's gotta be a PI ref! And surprisingly, the NFL refs actually weren't blind for once, and they made the right call. So now our chances of scoring have increased as we are now within the 30-yard line. 20 seconds left. I dart a high point ball down the seam. What a catch by Sen Wilson to tie the game! He catches it with his helmet! Oh my god, that is filthy! That catch right there sends the game into overtime! I am going toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best quarterbacks in 
in the NFL. But Buffalo wins the toss in overtime, which means a Josh Allen touchdown wins the game. Will we get another chance in this game? Can the defense get us a clutch stop? And they do. So here we go. Our first NFL overtime to defeat Josh Allen and the Bills. All we need is a field goal. We are already at midfield. Lay action bootleg. I hit the wide open check down to Adam Shaheen. Fumble. I cannot believe that. No, no, no. He needs to get cut off the team. I know I'm a rookie and I shouldn't be making roster demands, but send Adam to China. And we drop the game against Buffalo 27 to 24. Although I outplayed Josh Allen, this was extremely frustrating. I felt like we could be 3 0 right now, even with playing against two of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. And speaking of playing against the best, we play another elite quarterback in Joe Burrow. This time, however, we were on a short week as we are playing our first career prime time game Thursday night football against the Bengals and after Burrow starts out with a touchdown I come out hot going six for six for 60 yards but I can't get this throw off on the boot and we have to settle for a frustrating three 30 seconds left before half I'm rolling out to my right and I jack up a prayer to said Wilson oh my god Cedric that is disgusting this receiving corpse is absolutely insane as I thread the needle to Tyreek for another touchdown. That is throwing with anticipation right there, ladies and gentlemen. Show that film to the best quarterbacks across the nation. After pounding the rock all the way down the field in the fourth quarter, we come away with a huge win on primetime Thursday Night Football away against the Bengals. I outplayed Burrow in his own house and now I'm starting to pick up some confidence. But after dropping a close game against the Jets and missing a game-winning kick against the Vikings, losing in overtime. The team was 2-4 and four headed into week 7, which is not what people projected us to be. We were not getting results and Finns fans were starting to doubt my game. However, it was the perfect time to put on a display in week 7. Sunday night football against the almighty Steelers defense led by TJ Watt, Cam Hayward and Minka Fitzpatrick. People were tuned in back home in China as most employees only get Sundays off from their 996 schedules. So I had to show out and ball to make them proud. We get a fantastic Fantastic start to the game, throwing four completions on the first drive, and wrapping it up with a slant to Tyreek to take the lead. However, we find ourselves down by seven in the second half. The Steelers defense is doing a great job of collapsing the pocket and making life hard on this me. This is easily one of the toughest defenses I've played all year, probably in my life. But thank God their quarterback is Mitch, which gives us an opportunity with 2.18 on the clock to win the game. Sunday night football, down by four against the almighty Steelers. Under all the lights, what will the Chinese man do? First and ten. I drop back and get sacked by TJ Watt. My right tackle needs to leave the country right now. Robert Hunt is the name, I believe, ladies and gentlemen. This guy's an absolute scrub. And so it's second and 20. I try to fit a ball up the seam, but it is dropped. Third down and 20. We need a big game. I find Waddle off the slant, but he is just short. So here we go. Fourth and five. 57 seconds left. Biggest play of the game. I know that pass rush is coming. I snap the ball, and I'm looking for Sed Wilson. Incom Complete. And we drop our third straight game on prime time to the Steelers. The Dolphins start the year two and five, underperforming their expectations. It has been a rough start for the Chinese man. The NFL was not as easy of a transition as he thought it would be from college. Already being labeled as a bust, how will he finish out his rookie year? Will the Dolphins tank or will they make a late push for the playoffs? After making his official NFL debut against the Patriots and lighting up Bill Belichick's defense, the Miami Dolphins struggled to start the year. Led by the NFL's first ever Chinese QB, the Dolphins sit at 2-5, only good for third in the division. Although I am 8th in the NFL in passing yards and 8th in passing touchdowns, I also have 8 interceptions and 5 fumbles on the season for 13 turnovers. And the Dolphins are 31st in the league in offensive yards. I'm facing heavy criticism from not only Dolphins fans, but from the Chinese people as well. They can't believe I am making millions of dollars playing the sport of football, alright? I'm making more money than every Chinese doctor in the world. It's outrageous. But can we turn our year around with a late season push to the postseason and salvage the year? Let's find out as we enter week 8 at Ford Field against the Lions. I see Aiden Hutchinson in man coverage against Mike Gesicki. You know I gotta throw it up and give him a chance! This guy just makes play after play. He has to be in the discussion for the best tight end this year. As he makes a nice toe tap catch to bring the ball on the goal line. We end the drive with a rushing touchdown to put us up by two touchdowns. Hey, 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 hey. Then we come out of half and throw back to back 
to back interceptions. I'm going back to Stanford to finish my undergrad. Three straight picks against the Lions? Yeah, I'm unemployed. But after finding a deep ball to Tyreek Hill, we get the rushing touchdown to take the lead back. But then Jared Goff just transforms into Tom Brady and just turns up. No way, he just scored in 40 seconds. So now we got 28 seconds to get a field goal with three timeouts. And we instantly start with a deep ball to Waddle. Timeout Miami, busting coverage. We then find Waddle wide open once again and Sanders kicks the field goal to bring this game into overtime. We win the toss, a touchdown wins it. Can the Chinese man get clutch and bring this one home? Second and 10, I hit the check down to Chase Edmonds who does a fantastic job fighting for more yards. Third and eight in Lions territory. We hit Gasicki from the pocket for a nice pickup to put the ball on the one yard line. And we gotta do it, are right? we? Gotta hit the CPU with the Madden cheese. Fullback dive handoff. Touchdown. We grab a huge win there against the Lions. Will this be the start of the turnaround for our season? As we head to Chicago for another road game. Our first career game at Soldier Field and our main focus this game is to limit our turnovers. We have turned the ball over way too many times this season. You know, it, it's just gotta stop. Coach McDaniel is furious with my turnovers, and now I'm pissed. I felt like the fans, the coaching staff, and even my own people from China were turning on me. I was not playing smart football, and I look like a shell of myself. But the one thing you don't want to see is a Chinese man that is angry. I've seen that slipper too many times throughout my childhood. I know how to respond from adversity as I hit a wide open Tyreek for the touchdown. And after scoring two consecutive touchdowns and forcing Duke Shelley to play a game of Twister, we cap off our day with the fourth touchdown and the win. Don't ever piss off the Chinese man. We take down the Bears to start a two game winning streak. Can we keep the momentum going against the five and three Browns? It is my first time playing against the massage man. I feel like I'm representing all my Asian masseuses. I need to take down the Sean. Seven seven game late in the second quarter. My right tackle still hasn't been deported. So I gotta throw up a shot. Ridiculous catch again by all pro Gesicki. That's right I said it ladies and gentlemen. All pro Gesicki. This man has been the best tight end in the NFL this season. And then I chose to throw a back shoulder to Chase Edmonds, which ends up in a pick six. <sighs> Fourth quarter, 252 left. We are down by seven. We need a touchdown to knock this game up. Third and 14. I drop back and Miles Garrett's scary ass is coming for my head. I get rid of the ball just on time and I draw a roughing the passer call. Let's go to the next play right away just in case he tries to hit me with a helmet. All right, fourth and three. We need a first to keep our hopes alive. I snap the ball. I drop back. Big Miles is coming for me again. But I get rid of the ball fast and Waddle makes a clutch catch to keep the ball rolling. First and 10, 22 seconds left. I find Waddle yet again who makes another big catch. Timeout Miami. 16 seconds left. First and goal. I need a touchdown to survive. I'm looking, looking looking buying more time miles is on my ass again but i find a touchdown to sed wilson what a drive to tie the game with 10 seconds left and we head into the second overtime game of the video first and 10 all i see is green grass on the right so i tuck the ball and plant my feet in the grass Ooh, can't tell where we going coach mcdaniel loves the way i'm running so he calls a qb power he wants to see the ball in the chinese man's hands grant delp it you can come get some too play action pass on first and ten. I'm rolling to my left. I'm about to take a hit. Two. Touchdown! Waddle! Three straight wins for the fans and the Chinese man is starting to understand the NFL. He throws for 370 and four touchdowns. The bye week is here and I'm just enjoying the view. That was a little random. But after taking down the Texans for our fourth straight win, we are headed out to Santa Clara to play back at the barn right down the street from Stanford. All of my former college teammates and coaches were in the stands watching. So you know I had to put on a show. First and 10. I throw off balance. Deep ball to Tyreek Hill. And he wins the jump ball. I'm back. And I'm showing the Stanford crowd some shades of my game in college going for a huge 43-yard run, which results in another touchdown to Tyreek I recall for my 30th touchdown pass of the year. Late in the third, we are up by four. I'm rolling out to my right, and I find a touchdown while getting hit by Nick 
Bosa. The Niners tried to challenge, but I knew there was no way the challenge was going to get reversed, all right? Because the man who threw the challenge flag was Kyle Shanahan. So, of course, the call is upheld. The touchdown stays on the board. And we end up kneeling it out to get our fifth straight win. I go for 271, four touchdowns, 63 yards over the ground. The Chinese man is taking the NFL by storm. That win puts us in a playoff position as the seventh seed. Which means that every game from here on out is essentially a must win. But before we get into the next game, this video is sponsored by Raycon. Raycon is the company that made the everyday earbuds, which are the earbuds that I have in right now. I love using my Raycons when I'm working out because they are sweat and water resistant. They never fall out of my ears and they are so easy to control. You can easily switch tasks, turn up the volume, or take a call all with just a touch. But personally, my favorite feature about these earbuds is that I can change the sound profile of the music that I'm listening to. I usually listen to a lot of hip hop and EDM, so I set my earbuds to bass sound, which gives all my music a bass boosted sound. It's great for songs with strong beats, but I also switch it over to pure sound mode when I'm studying or when I'm doing schoolwork so that I get perfect clarity to hearing every single note. The sound quality on these earbuds are just as good as any other brand, but it's only half the cost. They have up to eight hours of playtime and the case, which is also the charger, holds up to 32 hours of battery. They've always got the carbon blacks on, but they also have different color options when you are purchasing. So if you're a big supporter of the channel and you need a pair of earbuds, click the link in the description box or go to buyraycon.com slash hefezai to get 15% off your first purchase. That's buyraycon.com slash hefezai to get 15% off your first purchase. Shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back into the video. Week 14 versus Justin Herbert and the Chargers. They are a 6-6 six and six AFC team. SoFi Stadium, this is pretty much a home game for us. There's like six Chargers fans in the stadium. That's a dead joke, but we are down by seven in the second quarter. And there's only one read I need to make. Tyreek Hill, one on one. That's bread basket. Touchdown. It's not Burrow Chase, not Allen Diggs, not Hurts Brown. It's Zion and Hill. This is the best QB wide receiver duo in the league. We move to the fourth, and it is a three point game. After doing this on second and five, it is now third and 19. All right, I don't see any receivers open downfield, so I'm gonna take it myself. Got a long way to go, but I'm tiptoeing along the sideline. I weave in and out. I see a bit of daylight. Can I win the foot race? Touchdown, Dolphins! You just can't find speed like this anywhere else in China. He's one of one. But after Justin Herbert responds with a touchdown, put together yet another two minute drive, which resulted in a 46 yard field goal to tie the game. We win the toss for the third time this video. Three overtimes, three coin toss wins. First play, I hit Tyreek Hill, who makes a sweet toe tap catch. Second play of overtime, I find Tyreek once again for another big gain. Staley is lost. Third play, I see Tyreek is hot. So I gotta keep the simple and make one read. I had to throw it up! Touchdown, Dolphin! No chance he is covering him one-on-one. -on -one. Is that Kyle Van Noy? The disrespect, one-handed snake. We win our sixth game in a row. The Dolphins are the hottest team in the NFL. As we are now winning the AFC East as the third seed in the AFC. But now we play one of our biggest rivals, Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. We lost the first matchup in week two, but I am a completely different QB and I'm ready to keep this hot streak rolling. Late in the second quarter, we are trying to get extra points before we get into the locker room. We are running hurry up to save our timeouts. I'm trying to escape the pocket. Fumble. He gets me twice in the same year for a sack fumble touchdown. I can't believe it. We are now down by six late in the third. Von Miller is just eating my right tackle's ass. But we need a touchdown to win. I'm rolling back out to my right. And I'm trying to find Tyreek Hill here. But he drops it. He had a walk-in touchdown on that play. I don't know what happened there, but on second down, I find Sed Wilson up the middle who sheds off a tackle to pick up the first down. Second and goal. We're chewing as much clock as possible. It's a handoff to Edmonds. We get the lead back. So now it comes down to the defense. Can we prevent a field goal with just over a minute left? Josh Allen is driving. I'm on the verge of dropping one on the sideline. Third and nine. Diggs gets a huge gain, which puts the Bills in field goal range with one timeout. What? Uh, I 
don't know what just happened. Buffalo had a timeout, but I love EA Sports. All right, we don't even look happy jogging off the field. I don't know what happened there, but I outplayed Josh Allen, and we have won seven games in a row. And there are only three games left in the regular season. Now we are playing Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers. And you know the law. If it's one-on-one -on -one for Tyreek Hill, then we throw the law. And of course he makes the grab right on Eric Stokes' head. He's got to be offensive player of the year. This game ends up going to overtime tied at 17, our fourth overtime game of the video. And I see one-on-one -on -one with Tyreek Hill again. I don't care if he's playing cushion. I'm going to take a shot. Oh. And our win streak ends to Green Bay. I choked that game for sure, committing five turnovers. The pressure of making the playoffs is starting to get to me as we fall to nine and six. And the Bills and Jets are right behind us waiting for us to slip up once more. So from here on out, every game is a must win if we want to clinch a playoff berth. And we travel up to Foxborough for a game in the cold against the Patriots. And I struggled early in this one as the pressure keeps increasing. Fans are expecting this roster to make the playoffs no matter who's at QB. And they are tired of seeing QB changes in Miami. I felt like I had to deliver despite the fact that it was my rookie year. But on the next drive, I drop back and I lace a dart right up the seam to Tyreek Hill. And we conclude the drive with a rushing touchdown. Which then we follow with another rushing touchdown. Whoa! Backflip? Get me in Team China Gymnastics right now. Late in the third, we are up by five. First and ten in Patriots territory. I drop back and I decide to float the corner route to Tyreek Hill. That's an NFL throw right there, ladies and gentlemen. One of my best throws of the year to Tyreek Hill in the corner of the end zone. Touchdown. Chase Edmonds later on ices the game against the Patriots to secure Hear the win at Foxborough. Who the hell is that? Not only am I one game away from clinching a playoff berth in my rookie year, but I am also announced as a Pro Bowl QB in the AFC. The first Chinese player to ever make the Pro Bowl. What a year for the Miami Dolphins quarterback. But we have one final accomplishment that we have to achieve. Regular season finale against the Jets. We must win this game to clinch the AFC East as Buffalo and the Jets are both 9-7 looking to win this game. If we win, we're in. We control our destiny but if we lose and buffalo wins we are out first drive of the game i cork my body trying to make a ridiculous throw and i get picked off anthony barr ends up coming up with the interception and he ends up taking it all the way for a pick six what a brutal start for the dolphins late in the second half we are in scoring position to get points before half i'm rid of the defense i see a size advantage i throw a jump ball but the ball is picked off once again miami fans in the stadium are shocked as they cannot believe what is happening right now we are losing despite allowing zero passing yards to the jets to Zach Wilson. The offense has to step up in the second half if we want to make it to the postseason. And after the Jets start the half with a field goal, we now face a huge uphill battle. First and 10, we're running empty, desperate for points. I luck the safety off and I hit Zed Wilson on the post route for a big pickup. And we finally get on the board with a slant to Tyreek for seven points. Defense allows a late field goal and here we go. It is time for the Chinese man to take over. Fourth quarter, 152 left, down by six. Play Playoff birth and division title on the line. Does the Chinese QB have what it takes to make the playoffs? First play, I roll out to my left and I take off. And that Fatso is not catching me. I'm cutting inside, looking for contact too. Second play of the drive, Jets send the blitz, but I find some separation between Sed Wilson and his DB, so I gotta hit it. And just like that, the Dolphins are in the red zone. First down, fantastic protection by the O-line. And I scramble out to my left again and get out of bounds to pick up our third straight first down. So now we are on the five yard line with 44 seconds left. We just need to get in the end zone because there's no way Zach Wilson's bum ass gets a field goal. First and goal. I hit Kasiki on the drag and he goes backwards for whatever reason. We only have one timeout though so we gotta go fast. Second and goal. Jets don't send the slide. Robert Sala, have you lost your mind? Touchdown Dolphins. What a game winner.
winning drive right there by the rookie QB. And we defeat the New York Jets to win the AFC East and clinch a playoff berth. After a rough 2-5 and five start, we end the year with a 9-1 and one record. I finished my rookie year with 4,767 passing yards, and 38 passing touchdowns. Both good for 6 in the NFL. But in the next video, we will find out what the NFL playoffs are made of. As we are not only looking to win the Super Bowl as a rookie, but become the first Chinese QB to raise the Lombardi. Dolphins, Raiders, AFC wildcard game. After finishing the season 9-1 and one and winning the AFC East, the Chinese QB is leading the hottest NFL team into the playoffs. Getting used to the NFL was hard at first, but he eventually adapted, becoming a pro bowler in just his rookie year amongst the AFC, which has some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. But now we are in the NFL playoffs trying to win a Super Bowl. This is every kid's dream when they pick up a football. Can I become the first Chinese man to hoist the Lombardi? We shall find out as we face the 6 C Las Vegas Raiders in the wild card game. Chase Edmonds is getting everyone hype on the sideline. He's getting a little too aggressive for Tyreek Hill. Here we go. First throw of the game is complete to Waddle and again rocked by Chandler Jones roughing the passer is called. Second throw of the game. Nice ball fizzled into the open area to Jalen Waddle once again. He starts out the game hot so I'm looking for him again on a deep curl but Trayvon Mullen makes an excellent play on the ball and we start with an interception on our first drive. That is not something fans want to see a rookie quarterback with butterflies in his first career NFL playoff game. But after Vegas turns the ball over in their own half, we score a touchdown off the bootleg to... Oh, I've never seen this guy in my life. Middle of the second quarter. It is 14 to 3. We are stuck on third and 23. I need to make some Chinese magic happen to get a first down. I need some Asian persuasion. So I'm rolling out to my left. Buying time. I tell said Wilson to go upfield. So I huck it at him. But then Chase Edmonds goes up and grabs it. That ball wasn't even for him. Third and 23. He bosses two defenders. That catch juiced the team up as I maneuver in the pocket to find Preston Williams for our second passing touchdown of the day. 20 one to three. Offense has been moving the ball very well since the interception. Play action. I see that Gasicki has a size mismatch. So I'm gonna lob it up. Ridiculous catch by Gasicki. Coach McDaniel cooked a fantastic play to get Gasicki on a mismatch and he just had to do the rest. We end the drive off with a pitch to Miles Gaskin to put us up 28 to three. With the Raiders double dip coming out of half and all of a sudden it's a two possession game. What kind of script is the NFL cooking here? Uh, I don't like it. Huge third and ten here to Fend off the momentum. I don't see anyone open, so I take off. I just gotta beat Chandler Jones to the marker, and I tiptoe my way to a clutch first down. Very next play, Raiders line up in cover two. So according to my mathematical calculations, if there is no linebacker dropping back in the middle third, and the Pythagoras theorem is proven, then a high point ball to my main man, Sticky Gasicki, should result in a touchdown. Offense explodes here, and we win our first career playoff game, 35-20. to 20. What a performance by the Chinese man. He killed off all the doubters with 329 yards and three touchdowns as the Dolphins dominated both in the air and on the ground. That is the Dolphins' first playoff win since the year 2000. Finns fans can rejoice. But not for long as we face the matchup of our life. AFC Divisional Round against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. The best quarterback in the league is going head-to-head. -head against the Chinese man. This is also Tyreek Hill's revenge game. All right, we wanted to win this one for him more than anyone. But unless someone from China ever becomes a starting QB for an NFL franchise, this is probably the only time you'll ever see Patrick Mahomes take on a Chinese man in a game of American football. And it is all for a chance to move on to the AFC Championship game. Game. After getting backed up to the one yard line off of a punt, we build together a long drive. Which ends off with a left corner bullet to who else? Tyreek Hill on his former team. Beautiful throw right on the money. But Mahomes responds with a touchdown to Kelsey right away and it's 7-7. Seven seven. Second and 11. I see that one on one for Waddle is a possibility. I don't usually match up hunt with Waddle since he's a shorter receiver, but he balled last game. So I wanted to give him a chance on the jump ball and he comes down with it. Jalen Waddle on Legere needs head. Dolphins back on top. This time defense gets a stop. It is time to pull ahead of this game. First and ten. The safety follows Sid Wilson. Tyreek Hill is uncovered. I cannot believe it. He is wide open. Second touchdown of the day for Tyreek. Andy Reid has no clue how that happened. That is way too easy. But 
Kelsey gets one right back, and uh, yeah, the Chiefs aren't going anywhere. Second half is here. This is set up for a classic old-fashioned shootout. We gotta keep scoring to stay ahead because Mahomes can come back from any deficit. First play of the second half is an RPO, and I make the wrong read. Interception. My first big mistake of the game. Xavier is sick of me. He's not eating dim sum for at least a month after that pick, but thankfully defense bails me out and holds them to a field goal. I gotta be better. First and 10 in Chiefs territory here. I find Tyreek Hill on the in route and he continues to come. As we move into the opponent's red zone, Mahomes is terrified of the Chinese QB. First and goal, I'm rolling out to my right. This dude is just watching me and that's an easy walk-in touchdown. What a game by the Chinese man. No lead is safe against Mahomes, I know, but the Finns are looking good. Good here late in the fourth after running the ball twice draining the clock down we are throwing as we are approaching the two minute warning when daniel calls a pass play i'm rolling out to my left i get hit i stumble on my feet and i get sacked in the end zone it is a safety all of a sudden mahomes has two minutes to win the game this is worst case scenario and of of course he takes advantage, finding Kelsey in under a minute for his third touchdown of the game. Wow. So now fourth quarter, 59 seconds left, down by one season on the line. We have three timeouts. We need a field goal to beat Patrick Mahomes. I screwed this game up myself by taking that sack. I need to go down the field and win the game back. First play, I'm rushing out to my right and I pick up a first down. I get out of bounds. I'm over 100 yards on the ground today. Second play of the drive. Verticals concept. I hit Kasiki over the middle on the drag for nine yards. Dolphins use their first timeout. Second and one at midfield. Chiefs send the blitz. I know it's man coverage. I find Waddle wide open over the middle for a huge game, which results in a Chiefs timeout. First and 10 from here, it'd be a 51 yard field goal. So we gotta get a couple more yards. I hit Waddle on the hook route for a gain of six. McDaniel chooses not to use another timeout here. And I almost get hit with the EA Chiefs. Holy. I call a quick one myself. If we lost that game because of that, I would have been pissed. All right. I almost saw my life flash away there. We set up a 46 yard field goal for Jason Sanders to send us to the AFC Championship game! He hits it! And we defeat the Chiefs in the divisional round! I take down Patrick Mahomes! This is my best career win as we drive all the way down at the end to send the Chiefs home! I outplayed Pat Mahomes throwing for more yards and the same amount of touchdowns and I led all rushers in rushing yards! Tyreek had 8 receptions for 159 and 2 touchdowns! Waddle had 6 and 128! This is the best receiving duo in the NFL! And McDaniel takes down Andy Reid! We are moving on to the AFC Championship game in our rookie season! This is some like Tom Brady-esque storyline that is going on! Can the Chinese man continue his Cinderella run? As we face Justin Herbert and the 7 seed Chargers! Who took down both the 2 seed Ravens and the 1 seed Broncos! We got to be careful this is one of the most dangerous teams in the AFC we have already beaten them in the regular season once it's harder to beat a team twice Herbert is a 97 Eckler is a 93 and they have the best wide receiver trio in the NFL With Keenan Allen Mike Williams and Odell Beckham Jr. Defense has a lot on their hands, but here we go. Last home game of our year in front of the Miami fans. Can we send the Dolphins to the Super Bowl for the first time since 1985? According to my math, that is 38 years, all right? Huge third and two on the first drive of the game. I'm dropping back. I'm looking for receivers, but I see an open lane on my right side. So I take off. Who wants to step up and tackle the Chinese man? I beat Asante Samuel to the pylon. God damn. Damn, that's a fatty. Chargers can't respond, and we are back on our own 20. I gotta stop making fat jokes. Out of shotgun, I see Tyreek Hill one-on-one. -on -one. He's got a step, so I rope the ball over for a huge game. And two plays is all it takes as I throw the best ball of my playoff run. Asante Samuel versus Mike Kosicki is just not fair at all. That is right in the basket, and the Dolphins are off to a hot start once again. However, Odell catches a touchdown after it. Eric Ebron masterclass, which just made my knees weak. I, I cannot believe our defense just got toasted by Ebron. Start of the second quarter, and ladies and gentlemen, McDaniel is in the kitchen. I don't think I've ever seen this play before. When the hell did he install this? But I keep seeing this matchup between Asante Samuel and Gesicki. The size advantage is just too big to not throw this ball. Next play in the red zone. Great feel for the pocket here. I'm running out when the kitchen's hot, and it's just green grass ahead. Touchdown, half side. And let me see you walk on you fools. What an offensive display so 
far, first and ten. I see Tyreek running a disgusting out and post route. Then I see one on one. Then I see it's a white DB. It doesn't really look that open, but all the boxes are checked off. So I had to throw it up, and oh my god! That might be catch of the year! What a snag by Tyreek Hill! And after scoring another walk-in touchdown and finding Tyreek Hill butt naked deep for a touchdown, the Miami Dolphins have 35 points in the first half. The viewers are turning this one off, ladies and gentlemen. 320 passing yards, 5 touchdowns, 2 incompletions for the Chinese man. And it's only only halftime of the AFC Championship game. And this lead was too much for the Chargers to overcome as they could not pull within one possession the rest of the game. And we defeat the Chargers 45 to 34 in the AFC Championship game to make the Super Bowl in our rookie year. I wanted to make it onto the national stage so badly as a Chinese QB and represent my people the right way, which led to me throwing for 441 and two touchdowns, with 97 yards on the ground and three touchdowns. So now it is time to play the biggest game in all of football. A Chinese QB has officially made the Super Bowl. All of my grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins are all getting flown out to see me play football for the very first time live. Everyone came over to have one last hot pot dinner to wish me good luck for the big game and my mom did the toast. Son, I'm really proud of you. You work hard for this moment. You, you have changed lives and inspired so many kids around the world. But if you don't bring home the Super Bowl, no food two weeks, okay? Figure it out. But after dinner with my entire family, we had to practice hard to prepare for the Bucks defense. The top ranked defense in the league had relentless pressure against opposing teams. And with Levante David, Vita Vea, Winfield, Barrett, Devin White, all 90 plus on their defense. We needed to game plan well. After watching all the film and doing media prep, we have arrived in Arizona. Hours before the game and I am taking in the stadium. What a life I have lived to get to this point. From all the scrutiny I faced choosing to play football in college without telling my mom, transferring out of Stanford Engineering to pursue football, being a lottery pick as a Chinese quarterback, and now I'm in the Super Bowl in my rookie year playing in an all-Florida matchup against the GOAT, Tom Brady. We win the coin toss and here we go. Super Bowl Finals, time to ball on the biggest stage. First throw of the night comes at third and five. We pick up seven yards with a drag to Gasicki. First and ten. Bucks drop eight in coverage, but I find the hole in the zone with a nice out route read to Tyreek. And we move across midfield here. I see Tyreek has a step on his man. So I dart it over there, but Winfield makes a great play on the ball. Terrible read. I thought it was one-on-one, -on -one, but I get lurked. Thankfully though, the defense bails me out with a stop on Brady and we come out to a third and two. But Daniel wants play action but it gets sacked by Shaq Barrett. He is screaming off the edge. Not a good start for both offenses as it is still a 0-0 game in the middle of the second quarter. Can we get a scoring drive going here? Play action pass. I fizzle a ball right by the defender's ear. Second and three. I drop back and I find the crosser yet again. This time to said Wilson. Dolphins in the red zone. First and ten. I see a mismatch on Gasicki. But he is unable to come down with the ball. Big third down here. Can we keep the drive alive? I find Waddle on the whip route. I lead him forward. He reaches for the end zone. And he is just short on the one yard line. But that is okay because on first and goal, we run it inside zone to Chase Edmonds. Touchdown, Dolphins. We challenge the almighty D-line and get rewarded for it. All right, seven point lead to start the Super Bowl in Arizona. After yet another stop by our defense, we are back to get more points before half. I'm rolling out to my right. I see a wide open open water. So I throw it up, but I make it hard on him, and he still comes down with a spectacular catch over Carlton Davis, which leads to first and goal. With over 40 seconds left, I'm rolling to my left, trying to get the edge to rush in the end zone, but I take a terrible sack to Shaq Barrett. 10 seconds left, last play before half. We are trying to put up six. Going into the locker room, Vita Vea, bow rushes, so I know I have the outside. No spy once again. Let me do my dance. The Chinese man is here to ball, and we are up 14 to zero at halftime in the Super Bowl. However, if everyone could bet money on one quarterback coming back in a Super Bowl, 
it would be Tom Brady. And TB12 strikes out of half to keep it close at a seven point game. We gotta slow the momentum change. Gotta be careful here. But I take a sack to Keem Hicks for a loss of eight. Pass protection has been a problem all night long. Second down. I'm trying to buy some time for my receivers. But they can't get open. Second sack in a row. And after a failed screen to Chase Edmonds on third and 19, we must punt the ball to Tampa Bay. And of course, of course, of course, Tom Brady capitalizes with a touchdown. So now it is 14-14 tie game. Fourth quarter in the Super Bowl against the GOAT. It doesn't get any better than this, ladies and gentlemen. Can we bring home the Lombardi? Second and one, we run a play fake, and this Bucks pass rush is immense. I take a shot to my chin, but luckily got the ball out. But after we pick up the first on a run to Chase Edmonds, I see the Bucks line up in cover two. I like the look of this. Levante David, you're not backpedaling fast enough, sir. So I dart it over the middle. Big play to Gesicki. And on top of that, Winfield gets called for the face mask, which adds another 15 yards. So all of a sudden, we are in the Buccaneers red zone. We must cash in. Second and four. I'm looking for the dagger throw. I rope it to my right side. But said Wilson can't get his toes in bounds. Incomplete. Third and four. Biggest play of the game. I'm looking for the kill shot once again. Looking in the end zone. But said can't come down with it. So we must settle for a field goal, which just is not enough. When you are playing against Tom Brady, all right, he capitalizes with a touchdown drive. And just like that, we are down by four. I have not played my best game at all, but everything can change in 205. All I need is to get a touchdown to win the Super Bowl. These are moments you dream of having when you were a kid. One drive to go for all the marbles. I have a chance to fulfill my dream. Will I take advantage or will I let it slip? Here we go. First play of the drive. I'm moving to my left in the pocket. I look for the seven round. And I get picked off. Levante David with the interception. Grave mistake by the Chinese man. Did the moment get too big for him? I crumbled under all the pressure once again. Defense can't get the stop. Tom Brady kneels it out. And I'm not getting fed for weeks. I had one drive, one chance to win the Super Bowl in my rookie year, and I did not take advantage. I did not have a great game at all compared to all my previous playoff games. I choked on the biggest stage. I wasn't able to perform in the biggest moments, and we lose the Super Bowl. I clearly get outplayed by Tom Brady. Interception on the game-winning drive. What a terrible way to end my rookie year. Shaq Barrett wins Super Bowl MVP. And that concludes my rookie season in the NFL. Dolphins fans are outraged at my Super Bowl performance and are even protesting for a QB change. All they will remember is that interception, all right? The interception that lost them the Super Bowl. What will happen in the offseason? Will I get moved to a different team? Or will the franchise stick with the Chinese man under center?